And we are live. What is going on, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the barren old... I hear myself. I hear myself. <laughs> Hold on. We're off to a great start. Let's see. Bam. Muted. That's the problem when you've got two computers in the same room and one of them has got your stream on from when you scheduled it. <laughs> we'll try that again. How is it going, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the last stream in the old place. It has been it has been a absolute blur from basically Wednesday when we got the keys till today has just been an absolute million miles an hour running around doing all sorts of things. So. Oh, how is everybody doing? Who's all here today? We've got Doom, Binny, RS, Kenneth, Knife, uh, Digital, Hobo, Viking, Alien, Aaron, Kali, Jack. How's everybody doing? <clears throat> so yeah, quick, quick updates on things. Uh, apologies in advance. I'm definitely far more tired than normal just because of how, how long and how much work's been going on. Um, also, I, I have decided this Saturday will be the first Saturday in two and a half years where there will not be a video on the main channel. I, I was, I've been trying to do everything in my power to get the video done, but it is just, everything's taken so much longer than expected. And I was really trying to keep this streak going as long as I can, but it's just not possible. And I feel like if there's one Saturday where I have the excuse, it's that I'm trying to move my life, you know, to another house. So. Um, you look tired. I am super tired. I feel good, but I'm also, uh, I'm also tired. I'm going to update you guys just sort of like with what's been going on. So the initial, the initial plan or the initial things that were supposed to happen was we were supposed to get our keys last Tuesday and everything was looking good. Tuesday morning, we went down to the title, uh, title office. And the final thing was basically to transfer over all of the funds for closing costs and the down payment. Well, I have most all of the money that I have in a savings account. That's like a online only account because it has really good interest compared to a lot of the bigger banks. And I've used it before and it hasn't been an issue, but this company for the title wouldn't allow for an ACH transfer. Uh, they had to have a wire transfer because I guess ACH transfers you could cancel because they take a couple days while a wire is like a one way ticket. So that way for something like this, you can't, they can't have someone cancel the funding. So I called the company or the bank and they told me, sorry, we can only allow you to wire it to the, the bank you have connected to your bank, not, not like a third party bank. So I wired everything over to a big bank, Chase, and ran over to Chase, and Chase basically told me, sorry, there's nothing we can do about it. Although it's in your account, it won't actually be in your account until midnight. So that was the initial delay, which I was pretty bummed about uh, at the beginning because we just, you know, we're so excited. We've been waiting for such a long time for this, but things happen. It was gonna be a one day delay, not a big deal. I was able to push back the fence installation and all the other things that needed to happen. Uh, and then that was it. And then we've been basically moving. But the thing that's been kicking my butt is the garage. We talked about this two weeks ago and I mentioned that, uh, I mentioned that I was going to be doing a ton of stuff to the garage because the garage is basically my secondary studio for all light burn stuff with lasers and CNC machines. That's all in the garage because I can't have it in the inside studio. So the game plan was to paint the entire garage using an airless sprayer and then epoxy the garage. And I've done like three months worth of research, right? Like I had spreadsheets, I had like all this data from like what this professional said and that professional said. And like, I had a really good idea of what was going to go into the project. However, what I, what I severely underestimated was the amount of hours that would go into this project. So um, I also had planned on doing it all by myself and my dad and mom flew out here and they've been staying with us for the last week. So my dad has been my wingman for all of this, thank God, because the just, again, the amount of work has been nuts. Like masking the garage for the airless sprayer was about probably 14 hours of masking because of all of the 
custom like the garage brackets it's a three car garage so there's brackets on the left brackets in the center brackets on the right brackets on the left i had to mask the entire water heater all the pipes coming out of the walls like it was insane i i just didn't i didn't take into consideration how long it was going to take to do any of that stuff um so yeah basically masking was like 15 hours which was which started off kind of fun right like masking it sounds like yeah this is cool we're painting but like man when you get to a certain point in the process of masking and you haven't seen any paint go on the wall, you start to feel sort of disheartened, right? Like you've done all this work, you're exhausted, uh, like standing on a three tiered ladder on my tippy toes, trying to get these metal brackets. And like, you still haven't actually done any painting. So I would say, let's see, I've gone a bit, the garage going to be an entire workshop. Yes. Yeah. The two, so the, there's the two cars like lasers and CNC. And then the third car bay is for Aaron to actually park a car. Um, because we get snow here and she said that she her requirement is that she needs to be able to park inside so that way she doesn't have to take Jackson out in the snow and I said yes that's fine um you can tell the amount of stress by the cleanliness of the beard <laughs> um so yeah masking took probably 15 hours then cutting in uh, just basically taking a brush and cutting in around all the masking tape was probably five or six hours and then spraying and back rolling two coats of paint was another 12 ish hours and the whole time we're spraying we've got uh both of me and my dad are wearing full painter suits right so like uh I, I posted i'll show a photo i got a photo of us but head to toe like white suits with uh masks on and the uh like big goggles on but the issue with the sprayer was because i was also spraying the ceiling the paint was sort of flying around and so every couple paths my, my goggles were getting covered in paint and so i couldn't see so i'm like blind spraying it was it was it was nuts um but that was that was that portion of it and then it was the epoxying and the epoxying was nuts i rented a 200 pound grinder from home depot and i've never touched concrete like for work wise right i've never worked with it and it was essentially me with headphones like like um base uh like like a workshop i don't know sound sound dampening headphones right mask on and just slowly pivoting back and forth for six hours in the garage uh and then when that was done i had to take a four inch angle grinder and go around the entire perimeter on my hands and knees getting the areas that that thing couldn't get and then i had to vacuum the whole garage twice which took like three hours it's it has been absolutely crazy but it's done the final it was basically three days of applying the the base coat uh no the primer the base coat two clear coats and today i can finally move stuff in on it but yeah, it's, it's been, it's been, it's been so crazy. That's why you pay people to do this stuff. Yeah. I, I think based off of the, based off of the research I did, I didn't call around a ton of places, but I did a bunch of Googling about like average cost to do epoxying for the garage. And I think that the price was anywhere between 3,500 to $5,500 to have someone come in and do it. And I think in materials alone, I spent 1500 to $1,600. I absolutely understand why, uh, I understand why they charge what they charge because the prep is insane and it's messy and it's chaos, but I'm really excited. I'll post later on. I'll take some more photos because I only got one right now and I'll, I'll post them in the discord. But basically, yeah, I thought I was going to be done with all this stuff by Saturday or Sunday. And here we are on Wednesday and you know, it's still sort of the icing on the cake here, but ah, rant over. That's what's going on. Uh, let's see. That's my favorite one. Ear, ear, yeah, ear defenders, exactly. Stick some lit diamondite in a tin of paint and call it a day. <laughs> uh, concert work takes forever. What kind of concert work do you do? Hey, Jose. Hey, PF. Hey, William. So, yeah, today or tomorrow morning, I pick up a U Haul so I can start actually moving big stuff like uh, washer, dryer, uh, big furniture, bed, stuff like that. And then, and then Friday, Friday, we have uh 14 cubic yards of rock getting dumped in our driveway for the dogs because the backyard is just dirt and it's muddy here and so the dogs will go outside and track mud everywhere so we're i'm going to be wheelbarrowing and raking rock all over the backyard probably hundreds and hundreds of trips so <laughs> it's gonna be nuts um the professional professionals can prep in half to one third of the time as they have the right tools yeah absolutely like the I ideally uh P.F., thank you very much for the 10 gifted memberships, man. Cheers. Let's do your horn. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, the best the best piece of tool for prepping the epoxy floor seems like it's a, 
a shot blaster, which I believe takes, I don't, I'm not entirely familiar with the tool, but I believe you just walk in a straight line and it essentially shoots metal balls at the concrete. I think that's how it works and leaves indentation. So it's really precise. And I think it also cleans up the concrete at the same time. So it's way quicker. Yeah, if you've got the tools, but um, be careful with your back. I, I have been, I have been like Aaron's been impressed because I've been really like exaggerating anytime I have to pick something up. And the only heavy thing was really the concrete grinder, but the Home Depot loaded it with their machine. And my buddy, his trailer is like a tilt trailer. So we were able to tilt it and roll it out. So I, I haven't had to do a whole ton of lifting, thankfully. But yeah, once we start moving tomorrow, both me and my dad bought back braces. So I will, I will protect as much as possible. Hey, Steve, how's it going? Hey, Sveg. Hey Buddha. Okay, so I would like to get some building of this printer done today. <laughs> it's been it's been a little bit. Um, whoa, one thing I wanted to say, which was kind of cool. So, if you've been watching this build series, there's been quite a few times in the documentation where I've sort of complained, not sort of complained, where I've complained that things are big, things are incorrect, um, and that sort of the documentation looks really nice, which is almost a bit more misleading because you sort of trust the documentation yet there's all these gaps in there tacos are long gone uh what are we printing tonight that's a great question uh but i did not reach out to cyborg yet however cyborg messaged me a few days ago and the message said page 23 m5 hexagonal nuts indicated on page 29 must be placed at this point performing this stat hold on hold on let me see here performing this step on page 29 is a pain Page 24, uh, it must be indicated that the end stop to be used is the same as the one by the Ender 3. It should be noted that we must lengthen both the thermistor and the hotbed before installing the hotbed. It would be advisable to change the design for the electronics fan goes because it's very loose and the advisable thing would be to make a design where the fan can be fitted in and tightened. The measurements of the pulley are different. There's no measurement in the screws that will hold places. Basically, they, they they watched all of the live streams and took notes of all of the things that I ran into that were problematic and already updated the documentation, which is freaking awesome. So I, I gave them praise for doing that because I said, wow, I was supposed to reach out to you guys and tell you guys these things. And you guys watched 12 hours collectively of video footage and made notes of these. So a lot of companies would not do that. And the fact that they did that and proactively reached out and updated it is awesome. And Cyborg, Cyborg has definitely had some issues with some of the parts in their kits, like the V0.2 had some issues, the Trident had some wiring stuff, but it's, I don't think it's from lack of effort. They have been so receptive to feedback and making changes. And I, I thought that that was really cool and I had to share it because I don't think any company has ever done that. Uh, companies will sure, they'll, they'll, I'll tell them something and sometimes they'll take it take it into consideration sometimes they'll ignore it sometimes they'll make changes but to 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 go out of their way and watch all of this live stream footage all the food talk all of the random rants and pick out those things is is very very cool so uh there's a ton more they don't have in their manual i'm sure there is but i'm saying like i gotta give credit where credit's due don't make me go to Taco Bell. Their support is great. Emma at Cyborg is amazing at what she does. Yeah, Emma is awesome. She has been just fantastic. Never has excuses for anything and always like, again, tries to make things right. Uh, told me all I need to know as an EU buyer so I don't get hit by custom fees. That's really impressive. I see Cyborg updating their Trident printer at the moment. Nice. So, okay, let's let's try to make some progress today. How, how is everybody doing too? It's been two weeks. I, I can't believe it. Again, I, I feel... Apologies in advance if I seem more scattered than normal or I look tired because I, I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't, but I'm here. I couldn't skip another week. I miss streaming, uh, so I'd like to make some progress today. But yeah, there's just there's a million and one things happening right now. So let's take a look at where we left off. Last week, we were starting on the X, I believe the um, X setup. We did the motor mounts, uh, which I went with. I installed them incorrectly, if I remember right. Uh, and I think I fixed those already. So next we need to move on to the idlers, but I'm not using these stock idlers. I'm using the, I oh know these are not. Okay, so these are up top in the top corner while these are on the corners. I modified the original version. <laughs> 
modify the original version to provide some more support as I converted and wanted the extra support. Hmm. We'll look at the we'll look at the modded parts and look at them. If you're a new dad and you're not tired, something is wrong. <laughs> I'm printing the ERCFB2. When are you planning to build yours? I don't know because I've got some other some other build stuff coming in that has to happen. So we'll see. I swapped out my trend to G2. It's quite good. Yeah, I'm excited for the Galileo too. I'm doing last minute prep for an art project where we're doing it. work. got to print two more things before yesterday. Good luck with that. Three month old with two other kiddos. I understand tired. Wow, you're a, you are a beast, Justin. Yeah, Jack's Jack's been um, just, he's been great, but he's been growing and running around and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, my, like I said a little bit ago, my parents are in town and they're staying with us, which has been incredibly helpful. Yeah, there's just a ton of stuff going on. Okay, we got this, we got this. Okay, so I don't actually know if these are the modified versions or the original versions. So I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna pull out all of them. And so we can compare and contrast. No, I'm just, yeah, I am. Yeah. You probably went backwards or didn't hit the live button. Click on it and click live. Yeah, thank you. Erin came in to let me know that she didn't think the stream was working, but it's just her phone. Uh, I missed that, sorry. Steve, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Steve has been... Uh, Steve has been getting messages from me as I've been doing all of this, all of this stuff on the house. <clears throat> this is going to be... I feel like this section is going to be a little bit confusing with all these different parts. Some of these, no, these are not the same parts. Hmm. Let me see here. Hey, Jason. They'll be officially. Uh, when will they be officially moving from Cali? They have a they have a, a cabin that they're going to be holding on to, so it'll be a split between being here and being out there. But I think the goal is is April is when they're they're planning on moving here for at least half the year. So they're gonna they're gonna head back home uh, in I think another week and a half's time, and then try to get some stuff done on their house so that they can sell it. They're just gonna do a few little like change out some lights and and. Um, swap out a few things before they put it up for sale. <clears throat> so I'm a little bit confused. If I look at the official guide here, the guide shows that we need to use this piece along with flat piece. Uh, flat piece looks like this. Nope, that's not right. Okay, so this is from the official, uh, thank you for your video on flow rate, really helped my prints. That's awesome, thank you. I'm glad to hear that, GPs. <laughs> I feel, I feel incredible. I had cold brew before this thinking that it would absolutely help uh, wake me up. Also, I got, I got pretty jacked up from the, one of the machines I was working on. So sorry if anyone's sensitive to <laughs> like blisters and stuff. Uh, so this is the piece, the official one from this kit here. And this mounts on the very top. However, one of the mods I printed out looks like instead of using this guy. Okay, so yeah, instead of using this, it uses these pieces and then it uses these pieces. Okay, so it does like a full triangle instead. I think I goofed though. It looks like, I don't know which one was supposed to be. I don't know if it was supposed to be like this with the accent and the primary like this, but this is what we're gonna end up using. 
Uh, Man of the Croc. Yeah, v Dude, I missed things. Nice, thank you very much for the 20 months. Uh, Man of the Croc, thank you for the 1011. I have a Cyborg V0.2 on the way. Space gray frame, beautiful. Uh, green and gold parts and dragon hypohoden. Now the wait is for it to ship. And now to add more characters to make the most of this map. <laughs> That's funny. I'll do give uh, to you. Awesome. Congratulations on the on the uh, V0.2. You'll have to post some photos in the Discord. Tag me in them. Hey, Elizabeth, uh, the squirrels are tired and capping. <laughs> what can go wrong, right? What can go wrong? <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, we are not going to be using these. We'll be using these triangular pieces in place of them. <sighs> Matthew, thank you very much for the 15 months. Alright, so let me, let me do my best here to see. This looks like... This looks like it's how it's going to go. So these are the modded pieces. Again, they're triangles. So you've got more space supposed to add to the rigidity. And it looks like this is going to be going on the left. Our bearing stack is going to be going here. Okay, so now I kind of have an idea of what's going on. It's been a little bit confusing doing some of these mods, but hopefully, hopefully it all works out. So we need M5 by 40 socket heads. M5, 40 socket heads. Do we have that in here? Yes, we do. <clears throat> hey, DJ. Okay, so where are the bearing stacks? I think I dropped them all in here. Maybe I did not. Yeah, I almost feel like with the way the garage looks at the new place, we might have to do a garage stream. I don't know how exactly I would do that. I'd probably have to use a laptop. Uh, nice, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships, man. <clears throat> okay, where's our bearings at? Here they are. Okay. Bearings are here. I don't have an overhead camera anymore. I removed it from the ceiling. One thing that's been interesting is the paint in this rental is is sticky. And I and I don't I don't fully understand why that is the case. Uh, and we didn't put very much up on the walls, but I gotta show you guys this this damage. So when I was removing the rep racks, and these were only held in place with um, two screws and two screws on each side. Look at this wall, dude. So it's covered in spackle. Uh, it needs a light sand and some touch-up paint, but when I removed the brackets for the rep rack, it, it tore, like the, the paint stuck to it, and it tore probably a one inch by about three inch area to the drywall on each bracket. Absolutely nuts. So that's fun, I have to fix that. <laughs> um, and I, we're definitely, I'm excited we're going with the Billy bookcase uh, version that Nappin had showed us because I, I don't want to, if that's what's gonna happen, I, again, I don't think it's the rep racks, I think it's the paint. <clears throat> I, I think that whatever paint they ended up using here, maybe when they decided to rent this house out, they went with a cheap paint, but it's just really sticky. Uh, today, today finished the build of the printer? Yes. <laughs> no. All right, so we are going through like this. So we've put in this big bolt through here. And then we need shims, M5 shims, which are all going to be right here. Was it cheap ABS, the chemical? No, it was actually PETG, Phil. It wasn't ABS, it was PETG. And I hardly ever print with PETG normally. All right, so we got shim. Somebody double check my work here because, because of my, my uh, brain. So we got shim, bearing, bearing. Then it's shim, shim. Shim and shim. Then we've got bearing and bearing. 12 by another shim. Okay, that looks beautiful. We'll pop this on like this. Okay, we got one done. Uh, that's its problem with solvent and most paint will react with the glycol. Interesting. So you're saying PETG? I don't know that it's entirely that though. 
Uh, because Aaron has a like yoga ball, or I don't know if it's called a yoga ball, like exercise ball that we got during the pregnancy. And that ball just going up against the paint in the house, I moved the ball away and it tore a big section of the paint off the wall. I've never seen, we've lived in, we've lived in one, two, three, basically three apartments and a house. And I've never had issues like that with paint. Zombie, thank you for the banana. I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw Zombie, but what was going on with the Spotify copyright strike issues, because I still got one two weeks ago. So definitely part of it was there's a setting in Spotify that when your playlist runs out of songs, it plays similar music and it doesn't care if what it plays is royalty free or not. So that was a big one. The second issue is some of the stream, some of the music I'm playing on this playlist, which is all from the stream beat playlist, they're actually getting copyright claimed. And I, uh, I searched on Twitter just for fun stream stream beats and saw a handful of other people saying the same thing. So what's probably going to happen is I couldn't do it today because there's just too much going on, but I'm probably going away from stream beats and unless they are going to change things up and get back with staying on top of the music in their playlist. It's it's just there. Some of their tracks are getting copyright claimed. So that's what's going on. Hey, Raheem. Hey, Cyborg's here. Hello, welcome. I was just talking about the feedback I got regarding the changes you guys made with the um, with the guide, which is awesome. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, I think it's cheap paint. Sounds like really cheap, crappy paint. Landlord special, yeah. And then I, I asked him, I said, hey, can you get me the paint? And he said, oh, it's, you know, you don't have to touch it up. We'll just dock it from your, dock it from your, uh, you know, your security deposit. I said, no, 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 give me the paint number. I said, I'm gonna fix this crap. <laughs> Uh, that's fair. I use the same Synthwave playlist every stream. Yeah, I could try that as well. I pay for um, Epidemic Sound, so I should probably just be using Epidemic Sound for these streams. Oh, so interesting. This is going to use an extra bolt, it looks like. Let me see here. Switch wire conversion. I might need to order some extra hardware because I'm using some of these different parts, but it looks like... Yeah, so the... the This piece... Oh, you can't see it. I'm <laughs> showing you guys... So this is the modified piece. It has three bolts and three um, three rolling nuts, while the standard piece has two. So I might need to order a few M540 sockets at some point here, but that's what we're doing here. So let's just go ahead and go back to side, push this through like this for right now. We'll build the second one before we actually install it. Nero said he's dealing with that too. Wait, what? Dealing with paint? Paint issues? All right, here is our second one. Let's make sure we're building this stack correctly because this stack should be different. No, I'm wrong. The stacks are the same. Okay, stacks are the same. And we're going like this. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to remember to order some of these. Hopefully we even have enough for today. I didn't, I didn't think about the fact that some of these mods were going to use extra hardware. Okay, so let's pull this guy off. And we've got shim. Nope. We've got shim. Yeah, music. Oh, music copyright derp. That's what I was talking about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him post it online. So basically, what I'm doing is uh, because it seems to be one track right now. That's the violator, and I don't know exactly which track. But when the stream's done, I just have it chop out that three minutes of the stream, which is kind of annoying. It, it also gets rid of gets rid of the live chat playback, which is kind of the thing that bugs me the most. But luckily, all of chat is on screen as well, so you can still see it there. Okay, so we've got shim, bearing, bearing, shim, shim, bearing, bearing, shim. That looks correct. Pop this guy on top. <clears throat> okay, two more. Whoa, turn this guy around. Right. 
That's trippy. <laughs> I didn't turn that screen off. There's like screenception. Let me let me turn this a little bit. I don't like that. You can see. Oh well, I don't know how much I can really um, change this. So we're doing one roll in in that direction, one roll in in the other direction. A little far away from orange printer land. There's also a new YouTube thing that puts other content creators videos in front of the video. That's weird. Yeah, I've got, I changed the ads because Nice kept saying that he was getting ads like, I think it was every 15 minutes or something. So I changed it from balanced ads to minimal ads. Those, that's the lowest option that I saw. Okay, and we need one more. Uh, is it your second switchwire correct? Mostly PLA. Also, I forget what probe you're going with. So this is my second switchwire. The first one was an LDO, like full switchwire kit. Um, the first one actually has printed almost exclusively not PLA. <laughs> uh, tons of ABS on the first one. It's now, it's no longer enclosed, so that's not the case anymore, but I used it for a lot of ABS. Uh, I had issues initially with the Omron probe, so I switched to Clicky and it's been fantastic. Um, and then lately it's been printing a bunch of random materials like this is we're building a stealth press in the near future here and um like all of the glass and carbon pet it's been doing a beautiful job with so yeah the other one's not going to be enclosed i'm going to leave it permanently not um not enclosed this one will be enclosed and for this one we're going with the omron initially uh big tree tech was supposed to send out one of their eddy current uh replacement probes or like the uh why can't I think of the, uh, yeah, the any current probe. And it seems like there's been some delays on that. So we're gonna start with the Omron, see how that goes. And then we'll decide how we want to switch things up. Steve, um, Steve from Steve Builds just finished the, let me change my face quick. Steve from Steve Builds just finished a LDO Switchwire Web C kit a few weeks ago. And he told me that he discovered that there was issues with the probe and the bed magnets because the LDO bed um, use, is the same kind of bed that's on the Prusa, at least on the previous Prusa, so maybe not the Mark IV, but the Mark III's, where it's got the embedded magnets versus being magnetic strips, and that that was interfering with the sensor. So I don't know with my original switch wire that was having all sorts of issues if it was if it was thermal drift or if it was magnets, but Steve makes me think after talking to him, it was probably the magnets. So if that's the case, this is, um, being that this is an Ender 3 conversion, it's going to use a mag sheet instead of those magnets. So uh, it, it very well could be that the Omron probe will work perfectly fine for all the printing I'll need to do. Uh, I'm curious to see because it was an awful experience with the initial switch wire. Like it just super inconsistent meshes over and over again. So we'll see. Eddie is drastically delayed, but your tech support keeps sidestepping all the piece. Order them with the crack and launch. Interesting. Probably make this room. Hey, James. Hi, Daniel. Have you seen the new Crowdy Ender 3 Core XC? I I've seen it. I don't know a ton about it um, as far as like pricing goes and stuff like that. I'm potentially interested in getting in Crowdy's Ender 3 that's $199. Because I feel like right now, unless you're just completely, I mentioned that before, but like, unless you're completely anti Bamboo Lab and anti cloud, it's hard for me to recommend some of the enders that are in the same price point as their, um, as Bamboo's printers. But the one that's $199, I'm interested in because it's like, I understand for a lot of people getting into 3D printing as a hobby that's never purchased a 3D printer or used one before, like the less you can spend, the better gen in a lot of cases, right? Um, I know that when I got my first 3D printer, like I saved for months and months and months and months to, to get a $400 printer on sale. So although there are lots of great printers out there now, uh, not everyone 
has the budget to just splurge, uh, you know, on some of the more expensive printers. So I'm curious to see what their, their 199 one is. The Core XZ version or the Core XZ printer that they released from what I saw looks pretty good. But I think it's I think it's pretty pricey, right? Isn't it like three eighty four hundred dollars? Uh, it's okay. The auto oh, so you you got one zombie? I recommend the Clicky PCB. Yeah, we're using Clicky PCB on the two point four. Two point four is what we're using it on. That's been great. Might be a dumb question, but can you use the Clacky on SwitchR to avoid the Servo Clicky mod? So. Uh, Polar Ted, who I saw, I think I saw, I'm pretty sure I saw Ted in chat a little bit ago. He sent me a photo of a, he's working on a Anycubic Chiron, 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 um, to sort of stealth burner, switch wire-y conversion. And he is designing a, essentially a Clack Ender type variant. So for anyone not familiar, the way I got one to launch, okay, cool. So for anyone not familiar with, uh, I think most everyone here is probably familiar with Clicky, right? It's basically, you've got magnets on your tool head that are hooked up to wires for the end stop. It goes over, connects to the, the uh, limit switch that then creates the circuit or like the electricity passes through the magnets, which is really cool, and, or signal. And then it goes around, does the probing and docks it. Well, that works fine in a situation where your tool head can get off of your build plate. So Core XY is primarily is what it works really well for. And on bed slingers or like the Ender version, a lot of times, like what I'm using on mine, it needs a servo. So it needs an arm that's off of the build plate that can move an arm out onto the build plate area that can then be grabbed. And it's worked out really well for me. However, it adds it adds additional complication. Like you need a servo, you gotta make sure that you get the servo configured correctly. And, and it's been, again, really reliable, but the Clack Ender uses, like it basically just uses a bump. Like, I don't know how to even describe it. it if you, I did a video on Clack Ender, so if you look it up, but instead of using a servo, it goes over and hits a little thing on the side that sort of knocks the magnet probe off of the tool head and back onto the dock it, it is like it's like it's smart but dumb like like it, it, i don't know that's the way i would describe it like it's it's a fantastic use of low tech <laughs> it works really well so yep oh there it is here i'm working on that for my charm but i don't think it will work on a switch wire but i did see a switch wire tap pcb mount last night maybe it could be missed and matched for a clacky setup interesting yeah, clack is simplified and genius. Exactly. Smart but dumb equals clever. Yeah. So when I say dumb, I don't mean dumb. Like it's the 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 thought behind the actual mechanism and how it works and docks and grabs itself is is genius in my opinion. I just mean that like from a tech standpoint, it's dumbed down. It doesn't need to use any kind of servo or electronics. It just uses magnets, a bolt, and a tiny printed bracket. Yeah, it's really cool. It's super, super cool. Okay, let's <laughs> let's let's get some stuff installed. <clears throat> Let me try to get these lined up really quick. You know, I can actually install. That's the other thing. I packed down <laughs> packed down most of my tools, so we're gonna be using these guys instead of my usual instead of my usual drivers. It's too small. Okay. Actually, I don't know if I can do this until I push this up. mess with clack on my ender 2. You just recently got the ender 2, right? I feel like I saw your post on it.
Okay, so this side's on. I'm just going to, do I have a square? Yeah, the weirdest thing about moving is like, what's here? What's at the other place? What's the, I, I mean, the weirdest thing about the way we've been moving since we're sort of slow, slow moving. But now that we're at this point, I'm ready to just put the pedal to the metal and, and get, get the last few things done here. <clears throat> uh, turning it into a core XY on my new printer. Turn what? You're, you're turning the Ender 2 Pro into a core XY? I need, I need more. <laughs> I need more details about that. I feel like you're gonna need a hell of a lot of extrusions, <laughs> unless cantilever, unless cantilever printers are really <laughs> changed. Probably next month, I'm gonna order a Clack Ender and a dual belted Z kit. Nice. I feel like, I think you mentioned that when we were, I think we were talking about it a couple weeks ago on stream, possibly. Where are you going to order the kit from? I think they're, I know initially, um, oh gosh, initially there was only one vendor and now I believe there's a secondary vendor that you can buy the kits from. Part, part of the, the printer of Theseus? <laughs> I like the name. I'm getting ads like every seven minutes. Weird. It shouldn't be the case. I don't really know what to say. Is anybody else getting tons of ads? I, I don't know how that could be. It's on the lowest possible setting. Yes, these are wear wrenches. Uh oh, Jack's awake and crying. Okay, I don't want to over tighten these. No ads, okay. Yeah, I love these. I mean, if you saw, I did a video in January about like my top five favorite tools and they were in there. Okay, that's plenty tight. Beautiful. All right, one down. Let's get the other one in. Ah, uh, no ads here. One on the 30 minute and veg. All right. Well, one in 30 minutes isn't awful, I suppose. It definitely could be a lot worse, but yeah, one in seven minutes is one in seven minutes is awful. But one in 30 minutes sounds about right, probably for what light ads is. Okay, these need to be aligned, so. Let's get you right about there. And you need to go over. Mm -mm -mm, maybe a hair a bit more. Okay. He's awake. You guys want to see Jack Jack? It's been two weeks. It's okay, 30 minutes and you can skip them after. Okay, nice. Yeah, that's not bad. You guys want to see Jack Jack? Big boy? What's up, big dog? What's up, big dog? Everybody's in here. Hold on, let me change it. For me. Um, can you hand him over? <laughs> you got crazy hair, dude! You look like me, dude. We both need haircuts. Oh, big guy. <laughs> Oh, I'm holding him? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, just wait. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Aaron's gonna load the car with a couple things and all of Jack's restraining, uh, like seats and stuff are at the other house. So I'm gonna hold Jack Jack for a couple minutes here. Can you say hi? Show them your wave, buddy, buddy. Show them your wave. Say hello. Say hello. He's tired, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just turned 11 months yesterday? Two days ago now, on the 5th. Huh. You're a big boy, 11 month old. Huh? 11 month old. We got him this, uh... You okay? Okay. We got him this little walker with wheels in it, and he's been cruising around here, but the new place has mostly laminate flooring. And so, 
he's like Tokyo drifting around the entire place, doing laps around the island. And uh, we've nicknamed him like the the ankle destroyer because his his chair with the wheels it, it has like just the right height to hit you right in the ankle bone. And with how fast this guy's going and throwing all of his weight into it, you really you really got to watch out, huh? We got to print out some TPU bumpers for you or something so you can't hurt your mom and your dad. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you, James. Yeah, almost one year. Mm. Oh. Nah, big boy. I said he's the ankle destroyer. Huh. Isn't he the ankle destroyer? Huh. You're the ankle destroyer, dude. Mom, it's got bruises on it. Oh. Yeah. You got big boy? Yeah. Uh, I gotta get back to it. Dad's gotta actually build something today. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're okay. okay. You're okay. Glad he got a little nap in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you going to the other house? Yeah. Okay, I love you. Okay. You good for your mom? Okay. Uh, if you. No, nah, it's closed. Yeah, I get distracted easy. Uh, would you recommend, what do you recommend as a second printer? I have a very modded Ender 3 Pro and I'm looking at the A1 Mini and the Flash Forge Adventure 5 Pro, not, or Adventure 5, not the Pro version. Uh, mini printer, as I mainly print PLA, I think the A1 Mini is a fantastic printer. Um, I plan on using it a ton in the, in the new studio. So that's what, that would be my recommendation. As long as the, as long as the size as long as the size isn't an issue for you, because it doesn't exactly have the biggest build volume, um, I I feel like I've heard pretty good things about the Flash Forge Adventure, but I don't know I don't know the key differences between the non-pro and the pro variant, so I, I don't really want to speak too much on that. But yeah, I I really like the A1 Mini, and I'm not I'm not a cantilever guy. Generally speaking, like I don't I. The KP3S is fine for what it is. I wasn't a big fan of Prusa Minis. I've had two of them and I think they're I think they're okay. I had a lot of issues with one. The second one performed pretty good, but I didn't think it was anything too great. And I, I didn't feel like it was very stiff, the frame. Um, but yeah, if there is a cantilever to me that I would be going with, that's the one. It's It's been really nice. Okay, no, okay, so it's kind of like a P1P, gotcha. Yeah, I, I really like the A1 Mini. I feel like I'd be cautious about the A1 series right now. Uh, would be good. Yeah, I know that. I know that the A1 Mini has a completely different bed setup, so I don't foresee it being an issue. And I, and since it's been out for three or four additional months, I feel like, given that the stuff going on with the A1, that probably would have happened. I still need to reach out. I uh, Bamboo messaged me, you know, basically emailed me saying. Like everybody else, I have like, I think the options are either to send the printer back or they'll send me the new wiring harness for the AC bed. And I'm just gonna swap it out myself. I I can't imagine it being that more much more complicated than, you know, doing AC wiring on a, on a Voron printer or something like that. But I, given that their printers have been advertised as, you know, turnkey for the most part, I, I, I think for a lot of people sending them back makes a lot of sense. When I multi-print, I use my A1 Mini, I sold three... Wait, when I multi-color print, I use my A1 Mini, I sold three of my four... Yeah, I saw that you were selling a bunch of them. You just you just weren't using them very much, the AMS units? Uh, did you ever link to the mods you were doing on this kit? I searched your Discord and couldn't find anything. I just threw my side where anywhere and I'm printing... Uh, I don't know that I did, but I can do it right this second because if I say I'll do it later with everything happening, I will never do it. And I don't wanna, I don't like saying things and not falling through. So let me really quickly here. <clears throat> One second here, do, do, do. let's put the cam on me. Um, do, 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 do. Where are messages? Okay, so Raheem sent me all of these. 
So copy link. So I'm just going to, if you go to the live stream channel right now, I'm just gonna start pasting them one by one. It'll take me two minutes. And then for anyone that wants it, I'll just reference it. For anyone that wants them, I will just reference it. So there was one, here's two. Cause I've had a few people ask me now about these mods and I keep forgetting to post them. So I think this is the best, probably the best time to do it is right this second. So there's the motor mount. This is the XC blocks. Copy, copy, copy link. I think there's six mods in total. So here's number three. Um, I got hot all of a sudden. Um, here's three, here's number four. Five. It looks like it might actually be five, not six. Let me see if there's one more in here anywhere, but I think this is it. Yeah, so it's the upper idlers. It's the Y chain mount. It's the XD blocks. It's the beefy Y motor mount and it's the uh, motor, the XZ motor mount. So that should be everything there. Yep. Okay. They're all posted. Is it a really big problem? Sounds like a problem if you bend it. I don't know. So when it comes to the A1, for anyone that hasn't seen, basically the A1, not the mini, the A1 is using a different type of bed wiring. And it seems like the way the stress or strain relief is on the bed, it's too stiff. And so that in combination with the wiring choice that they decide to use, if you tilt the machine back and that like either during initial assembly or I don't know, you're moving your printer around, that that stress of the printer weight on the strain relief slash wire can cause, it seems like it's a short that's actually causing some, it potentially could cause some arcing. I don't think it's happened very much, but regardless, if it were me, and I, if it were me and the options were to replace it and I had the initial box to do so, I would absolutely do it. I don't know what it looks like if you don't have your initial box to send it and swap it out. Um, but at the very least, if they're, I think the options are either send it to them and they'll send you a new one or they'll send you the wiring harness to swap out and $120, I think it's $120 gift card. Um, I would absolutely do one of those two things. I, I would absolutely do one of those two things. When it comes to electricity, especially AC, I, I'm not messing with it, both for fire as well as, as well as, you know, injuring yourself for someone else. So I, I don't know, I don't know the scope. I know that a lot of things have been quite exaggerated and there's been a lot of things that have been shared around that seem sort of fishy to me. Uh, but nonetheless, they have acknowledged that there's an issue and and I, I don't know any other company that's basically recalled printers like that. Uh, so I'm not saying that that gives them a pass, like this should have been caught in testing, absolutely. But yeah, in my opinion, if you've got one of these printers, you should either swap out the whole unit or at the very least do the wiring swap so you've got a proper, the proper wire and proper strain relief for that AC bed wire. That's my, that's my opinion on it. Um, I want to be able to print with ABS because in the near future, okay, if you want to be able to print with ABS, I would not go with the A1 mini because the bed caps out at 70, if I remember correctly. Um, as far as that flash forge, uh, you said not the pro version. If it's like the P1P and it's not enclosed, if there's an upgrade kit, then that could be an option. If there's not an upgrade kit, you're going to have to rig something because you're not going to be able to do a lot of ABS consistently and reliably at a scale with a fully open printer. Uh, Additive Adam, thank you very much for the three months, man. Cheers. That's why Flash Forge was still in the runnings. Yeah, I, I just, I don't like, because I haven't tested out the Flash Forge printer and I don't, I can't think of, itchy nose, um, I can't think of really anyone that I have watched that I, that I seen lots of feedback on it. I just can't say much about them. They've been around for a long time, so that's something. But yeah, I'm sure the bamboo haters are loving this. Yeah, there's been a lot of, there's been a lot of, uh, what's the, what are those things called that you like megaphone, a lot of megaphoning of stuff. And 
again, the situation isn't good with the printer. They're addressing it, but I don't think that like, I don't think adding fuel to the fire is the right answer. Didn't bamboo release? Yes, so for the bamboo printers, for the P1P, you can print out panels, uh, which is pretty cool. I would look into, if you're looking at the Flash Forge, I would look in to see if there's an upgrade path for it. Uh, I'm ready for the Frozen Arco, but waiting for reviewers to get them. Yeah, a third party company reached out to me about it and I don't like really working with third party companies. So I reached out to Frozen directly and never heard back. So I don't know if I have one of those coming in. Uh, bamboo bed wiring is scary bad. The teardown picks so very poor practice for separation of wiring. Yeah, that's unfortunate to hear. I'm sure they've learned their lesson with this. I've left some in discords, Facebook groups and unfollowed people over all the drama. Yeah, I have not been on social media. The fact that I've been living in my garage for the past seven days has been awesome because I have seen very little of all the stuff going around. I just, I get like, I get it. Everyone's got an opinion, but like at the end of the day, I, I love 3D printing. I like making stuff. I like hanging out and talking printer. Like that's, that's what it's at for me. I don't care. I don't care what printer you have. I don't care about any of that. Like, it, it, yeah, I, I, so it's been nice. It's been nice kind of being in my, my hazmat suit in the garage for five or six days and disconnected. All right, so we are officially done with the top idlers. We went with the beefier ones. And so for this, we're also going with the, wow, these are a lot beefier. So to show you these, this is this is the final mod that we're adding onto this. So here is the, here's the default part from the, the, um, Cyborg GitHub, and this is the modified version. I don't know how well you can see it, but it, it's quite a bit beefier. It actually has like an external, like like this. the right side is very similar, but it has a much thicker external wall to it. I'm, I just followed you on Twitch. <laughs> I haven't streamed on Twitch in many, many, many years, but thank you. Okay, so we can, we can close out of this one, because we're done with this one. And this is the final mod. It looks like, what is this? Is this an additional? It looks like this is an additional mounting point. That's what that hole is. So they give you, I'm uh, not sure if this helped me roll out. Uh, much easier and always square. Okay. All right, so we're doing more shim stuff. Let's see. <clears throat> And these are gonna be M530 button heads. M530 button heads, there we are. Okay. The beefier ones are very nice. Yeah, they look awesome. Got one, two, one goes here. One goes here, wait, I think, yep. And then we've got, both of them are the same. So it's shim, bearing, bearing, shim. I think Bamboo makes really accessible products. So it's important to talk about the failure if people are talking about the A1 line. Yes, otherwise it's like, I don't know how many major car manufacturers haven't had a recall. It's just a thing that happens. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It's definitely something that they should have caught and it sucks that it happened, but I'm also thankful that they decided to give the option of, Hey, we'll take every single unit back from anybody that wants that. I don't want to compare. <laughs> I don't want to compare to the worst case scenario, but I've been 3D printing long enough to remember when the ANET A8s came out, and I don't remember a single sorry or a single attempt to correct any of the any of the issues. Otherwise, it's like uh, it's awesome here. Fabrico Fabrico satin sheets are so nice. I've got one on the 2.4. Is that is that the P sheets or did they re release a new sheet? So I've been using the Fabrico P sheet for a bit and I like that, the P series. I think it's the P series is what it's called.
Okay, and then this goes like... Like this? No, that doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem... Did I screw up? It can't be like that, so it has to be... Thinner guy, I guess, has got to go on top, so like this. Uh, new... Oh, okay, it's new. The ain't it? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Why is this not... One second here. All right, music stopped. It is so quiet. There we go. Oh, okay. So I realize why it's not going through. So this, um, this has got printed threads in it. So we are going to tighten this. Only one of them has printed? No, they both have printed threads. How does this attach then? If it's got, let me see. Huh, I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna over tighten these because again, we're, they're, they're printed threads, but we do want them at least snug. Uh, I know I said a lot online, but doesn't the Ana 8 cause some fires? Yeah, it, it did. I don't know how many, but I remember like the one big photo of someone that I mean, I think if I remember correctly, the person had it in a place surrounded by a bunch of stuff that was quite flammable, so they weren't doing any favors, but regardless, the main issue with the ANET A8 was that it needed a MOSFET board. The board was not built for to power to be able to have the power draw required by the bed. So what was happening was the, ter the screw down terminals where the bed goes in were melting and the melting of them could lead to a fire. Uh, what is alarming is the fanboys who are saying they don't won't do the fixes because they are so blind to their DD manufacturer they have done something wrong. Yeah, it goes both ways though. Like, I, I know that, like I've seen some pretty gnarly, uh, like Prusa fanboyism and bamboo, and I just any every company is just a company, right? Like they're that's all that they are is a company, and so I, I definitely. As much as I have recommended bamboo printers a lot, they're not perfect. <laughs> they, they make mistakes, uh, as does bamboo, as does everyone. So I don't understand, I don't understand any of that. Like someone mentioned the tribalism, I, I don't get that. That's not me. I use bamboo printers, but I have nothing against Prusa printers. I have nothing against really any, not really any manufacturer, so. My ANA ET4 nearly caught fire twice. Yeah, I had an ANA A8 that I used a ton and it was fantastic. I, like it, it, well, fantastic for the time. I gotta take that back. Acrylic frame printers were not the business. I, I'm glad that we've gone to extrusions and other things, but it worked well. I did the MOSFET upgrade right away, so it had a separate board and it just worked really well. As Nero said, no printers named. As Nero said, no printers named. Oh, A with number after. Yeah, it seems like it might be cursed. I'm gonna back off ever so slightly on these. Okay, so these are both free spinning. Again, they're they're um they're not flush with the bottom, the bolts. Uh, I almost went flush, but it felt like it was a little too a little too tight on the bearing, so release loosened it a little bit. Uh, I also heard of a 3D printer catching fire in a school. I don't remember which printer it was. I sliced for high temp PEI smooth and it also were perfect. Just need to drop a temp. Uh, leave those M3s a little loose to be able to slide that onto the gantry. Yeah, good call because it's going to compress the part and then I won't be able to get it onto the 2020 extrusion. So I might need to loosen it even a little bit more. Don't talk to me about CR6SE. <laughs> hey John, hope you had a good birthday, man. Everyone say happy belated birthday, tripods. Anyone can make a good printer and anyone can make a bad printer. Sticking to one brand is narrow-minded. Yeah, I, I, exactly. 
I think competition is great. I'm glad there's lots of manufacturers. As much as I like and recommend bamboo printers, I would be sad if they were the only option. Like there needs to be competitors. There needs to be competition. Like we've seen, I mean, look what happened when everyone was just sort of copying everybody for a lot of years. There was very little growth. It was so stagnant. So I, yeah, we need, we absolutely need competitors, more business, more 3D printing companies. There's lots of space in this space. Let's see what time is it? 2.05, so Okay, in 30 minutes, we'll open up. In 30 minutes, we will open up the giveaway. Hey BBs, happy Wednesday. Uh, how do you like your artillery printer? Oh, did you get one of the new artilleries, John? Or tripod? I don't, I, I don't know. If, I don't know if you've, I usually call it say tripods, but right now I'm funny, John. Uh, many thanks everyone. Currently I'm stuck in Chicago traffic. Oh man. I, I just talked to my cousin this morning. She lives in, she lives in Chicago actually. Looking at getting a Cyborg 2.4 R2 kit since the LDO kits are out of table in Canada. Anyone have experience with their kits? Uh, yes. GB's has the 2.4, I don't know if it was the R2, 2.4 Pro? I know he went with the one that had the CNC parts. Hopefully you have more M uh, M3 by 30 is great. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> if not, we'll have to order more. One of my goals for the new place and the new studio is to get a better handle of what bolts and nuts I have. I order like hardware all the, that went all the way through. That seems, oh, I screwed up. I screwed up. These need to come off. Nobody noticed, nobody noticed I screwed up. It looks like I, only, I didn't put shims on the other side of these. Uh... So far so good, up to like four, running pretty good. I got distracted and forgot to put them on top. So I did I did shim bearing bearing and forgot shims. My song. Shim and shim. Now we should be good. <clears throat> nice! Thank you very much for the two euros. Uh, please smash the like button. Only 50% is hitting the like button. Yes, if you have not hit the like button, please do. I wasn't paying attention. I trusted you to do it properly. <laughs> this has been a test and uh, everybody gets a, a C minus. It's all right, I caught it. Cause I, the um, the bolts were, were able to go out the other end of the printed part. And I was like, that didn't, that didn't work a second ago. Yep, the three electronic fans do suck hard, replace them. is hitting the thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up, thumbs up. <laughs> I'd rather wire, I'd rather wire a hundred printers and do bearings. That's funny. Yeah, I got, I got a little um, paranoid. Let's see, 157 viewers, 95 likes. Yeah, let's get to, we can do 150 likes. Let's get to 150 likes, I believe it. <clears throat> yeah, when I was initially building my V0, the first one, I remember seeing somebody in the Voron Discord that was having tons of issues with their belt being eaten alive. And the the cause ended up being that that person forgot to shim. So ever since seeing that, I'm like a little, little like triple checking my shims basically. Okay, here's our, here's our final extrusion. So we do have to use one different extrusion. <clears throat> I 
and we are doing... Okay, so let's start by... M38, and I think we're using... <clears throat> I can't remember if we used... Did we use Rollins or did we use Hammerheads for the linear rails? I really don't remember. I thought I, if I remember correctly, we stole, I think, okay, I think that's what we did. I'm pretty sure I opened the Trident hardware kit and we took some, took some from there. Yeah, this kit doesn't come with, it only comes with the, um, like, spring-loaded, uh, for the M5 screws, the rest of them are all these hammerhead ones, and I don't mind these, especially not for the panels, like something that's not that important, but for something like a linear rail, I, I want to make sure that when I clamp down, it's it's clamped down well. So we'll take, we've got some extras here that we'll use from a previous build. Just take a handful of these. I think it only shows using four, but I'm gonna do, let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three, so we'll do six. Roll-ins, yeah. So these, these are roll-ins, while the other ones are hammerheads. Everyone's got, I've heard so many different names for them, but that's fine. We'll call these roll-ins. Makes sense, there's a ball, they kind of roll in. The other ones are hammerheads. <laughs> Limp bear. <laughs> rolling, rolling, rolling. You said you will use the E3 Easy. Yeah, that's the game plan, is to use the E3 Easy, exactly. Bearing stacks on the Pandora's box were somewhat of a pain, but it turned out so good. Freaking nose bitch. I need to trim my mustache and my beard and my hair. It's like curling up into my nose and, and tickling me. It's driving me nuts. All right, this should be enough. So let's just start by attaching these. Um, M38s are what it is calling for. These are M38s. I'm wondering why I can't turn on the setting to accept gifted memberships. Huh. Is your account a branded account? As far as I'm aware, that's like the primary thing that you, you can't either receive or give if you have a branded account. I'm not sure. They're called sliding nuts. Once the ones with a spring leather ball. Sli sliding nut. Probably should have organized this a little bit better because I think they're gonna pop out when I try to tighten these right now. My account is branded account somehow and no way to change it. That's weird. That seems silly to me. Why can't this just because you own a brand you can't gift subs? Like what it doesn't or, or receive it doesn't make any sense to me. Like who who decided at YouTube that that should be a thing? Okay, so I see one nut. There, there, there. So there's not gonna be any in the center too. I think that's okay. Why is this so hard to find metric screws in Europe and in Portugal in particular for the Switchfire build? If you turn on and get a membership before branding and then swap to branding, you can still have memberships. I did seven online. Oh, you did seven? There, 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 there. Yeah, it's, it's kind of awkward. Maybe I should do... Maybe I'll do all the center ones then. So I'll do, I'll do eight then, I guess. So I'll have to add a couple more sliding, sliding nuts right now. Oh, 
So that one, that one, and this one. This is much more than that's needed. <laughs> Are you using Threadlocker? No, I'm not. I don't think I've ever used them on linear rails. I, if I ever used, no, I haven't, I haven't. Um, the only thing I really use Threadlocker on is typically uh, set screws, like for the pulleys. But for everything else, I've never had an issue. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing it. You're, you certainly can, uh, but I, I haven't had I haven't had any issues with things coming loose by not, so I just haven't. Yeah, I only use it on grub screws as well. I think the the exception to that statement is it stripped. I don't know. Uh, the exception to that statement might be on like the VZBot build. I think we used, we used it in a few other places. I think we used it for all of the screws that went into the tool head per Vez's recommendation or through um, like PB on the VZBot team's recommendation. But that's like the, that's the exception for me and not the rule. Generally speaking, I don't do that. I also, <laughs> I also take things apart and upgrade and put things back together a lot so it's typically more of a pain than it's worth okay so we've got all screws on other than two which is or one two three other than four i suppose okay and now for these Back you guys off a little bit. How much of the actual ender do you end up using? Quite a bit, uh, quite a bit. So the parts from the original ender are the bed, the extrusions, all the extrusions, the power supply, one motor, and you can use the, um, you can use the controller. I'm not, well, my controller was already gone. I'd already swapped it before. So I'm using the E3 EZ, which is what was in my ender anyway, so. Make sure you have the rail the right side up. Great, thank you for that. <laughs> Steve's like, my day, Steve, Steve will message me later, see my day is ruined. <laughs> when I ask why, they'll let me know why. <laughs> uh, let's see. So these. So this is from me tightening these probably a little too tight. Let's see if I can get these in. I'm gonna loosen these. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm definitely gonna loosen these in a second. Hey, what's up, Dutch? Happy Wednesday, man. I wonder if I need longer bolts or what's going on. This feels, feels like it's not sliding in quite like it should be. Okay, so this is like this. This guy is like this, which is correct. And so this should be sliding on. Okay, that seems right. Okay. So I'll tighten this up a little bit more in a second here, but at least it's all, at least it's all slid on. And then we'll get this side on. I'm gonna loosen these as well. So yeah, if you're doing the, if you're doing these ones, I would probably not tighten them as much as even I did. <laughs> hey, Tajan, happy Wednesday. Interesting, so this wants you to... This wants you to use a different screw here. 
Why? Why and what is that? Uh, where's the CAD? Where's the CAD? I feel like we had it open last time. Um, oops. Checking for updates. I just want you to open. Is that, yeah, it looks like that bolt's going into the rail. Uh, finish updating, no, just open. Yeah, it looks like they're using a, a longer M3 to do two things. One, align this, and two, fasten it to the rail, but that's a little odd to me. Uh, here we go. It goes into the rolling nut. Okay, so I need to remove this and remove the end. Uh, I need to remove the bolts at the end here, but I'm, I don't know what length that is. So let's turn you around. Let's click on you. What are you? Oops. There we go. Okay, so it's an M316 socket head. <clears throat> There's a new version of the manual available with a bunch of fixes and that bit include. Okay, sweet. I'll download it. Um, I will download it before the next stream then. That's right, because Emma messaged me letting me know that they had made a bunch of changes. Uh, some of it based off the feedback I had said and some of other things they had discovered. So I should do that. I should have done that prior to this stream, but I, I will do that. So we're going to remove the ends, the uh, rail screws in the very end because we're going with M316s versus 8s. So we'll dump these out like that. Find the M316s. They are right here in their socket heads. Okay, so now, third time, third time's the charm. Slide this guy back on that. Okay. So yeah, now the long, the longer screw goes through the printed part. Uh, I got a Kelly flower. It was pretty skewed in my core XY. Mm. I just sat down in my computer room, has the printer here as well, printing ASA, two minutes in the room, headache. Oh man. I've been pretty lucky to not uh, not get a whole lot of headaches when printing with ASA and ABS fairly often, but when I had my V0, when I had the initial V0, um, one second here. When I had my initial V0, God, starting over again, on my computer desk, and I was printing with it like basically right under my nose a bunch of parts for a build, I got, I got pretty gnarly headache and I could almost like taste the ABS. I think it was ABS, not ASA, it was just some years ago. And I remember feeling like, like every time I breathe, I can like taste the ABS. It was awful. So ever since then, I don't, I will not print right under my nose like that typically. Okay, I don't want to crack this part. So let's just do, that's probably plenty. You got a runny nose. Whew. Yeah, I mean, also everyone's got different sensitivities to to the polymers. I remember, I mentioned this before on stream, but there was a guy when I worked at Matter Hackers that was a customer that like called in and he had purchased some of our PLA and uh, he was having like an allergic reaction to it. I mean, it wasn't like life threatening, but certainly like he was just not feeling good headaches and just feeling like crap. So I, I think it's much less common with PLA because of what it is. And the fact that it doesn't have much odor by comparison's sake, but it can happen even with PLA. <laughs> That's kind of weird. So I, I goofed. I um I squared this up to the end right here, but on this side there's 
quite a bit more extrusion sticking out, so I gotta loosen this guy back up, and then I'll try to center it on the extrusion. I thought I thought it would be the exact length, but it looks like it sticks out a little bit, possibly. Uh, I'm printing ABS right behind me as we speak, but this is not very fumey stuff. How do you know what ABS tastes like? Well, it tastes just like the way it smells. Like, <laughs> I think I had just breathed in so much ABS from printing with it right under my nose, like I could quite literally taste it. Oh, I'm lying, I'm lying. So this, it does go, okay. So it does go flush with the ends. This uh, this hole that I just inserted that screw into, it's a slot, not a hole. So you can, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So yeah, so I'm, I'm going to do exactly what I did again, basically just take the square, put it up against the end here, push the printed part into it so it's aligned with the edge of the extrusion. I didn't realize it was a slot. Hey, do it. Happy afternoon. ABS puts off so many triggers. I want to try the new Nevermore Scorch, which makes it supposedly less harm harmful. I need I need Stefan to do a video on on VOCs and ABS and just the most common thermopolymers. Ventilation in my new workspace is much worse than my old space. I really notice ABS, ABS and the ASA and BS now. It's still not perfect. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. I don't know if I can get it any better than that. I think I've got it kind of pushed out as far as I can. Yeah, that's about right. <clears throat> yeah, there's ads. I don't know how often you'll get them Dutch, but it seems like for most it's like one every 30 minutes. Carbon filters are all but useless. The carbon becomes nothing more than a physical particle filter very quickly. Due to the atmospheric moisture. I wanna see I wanna see somebody with like a particle counting instrument do some tests like that. I would love to do some testing of my own, but when it comes to health related stuff like that, I really don't want to give out any like wrong information. <laughs> so I would rather someone that works in that space speak on it. Sister gets married before schedule is so tight. I won't be rocking on. That's exciting. Uh, is she getting married locally, or where are you guys? Where are you guys going? Okay, this is in. Oops, wrong way. Okay, so on the back side of this, we are using, gotcha, this also doesn't have it. Let's download the latest manual really quick here, since I was recommended that, that's what we should do. Cyborg, underwire. Wait. 
There we go. Yeah, M510s. Cool. They did fix it. M510s. M510s. There we go. I have a calibrated meter in the factory. Maybe I can borrow it. Yeah, that'd be cool. I noticed that I stopped getting ads as frequently when I switched from my iPad to my desktop. Weird. I have no idea. Um, I have no idea how that stuff works on YouTube's end. Okay, so I'm just gonna shove one of these roll-ins into here, one in the other side. And I believe since we're using this modded part, we have one more set of roll-ins we'll have to install after this. And then we can tighten down the rail and hopefully, hopefully get this mounted. <clears throat> there we go. Time to open the form, is it time? Yes, it is, okay. Okay, so giveaway form is getting pinned in chat in three, two, one. So in 30 minutes, we will be drawing for a spool of Polymaker filament shipped anywhere in the world. Thanks for the reminder. I don't have like immediate view of a clock. All right, so that guy's in. I can tighten down this side. And then we've got one more, one more bolt up top here, which won't be, this won't be there if you print the sideboard part in the GitHub repository. This is part of the mod, so I think it's gonna use the exact same size, so M5 tens, sounds right, M5 tens, and then two M5 Rollins. We'll do the same thing, just push these in like this. Line up the hole. And tighten it down. Hey, Engineering Chaos. Happy Wednesday. Okay, it's plenty tight. Come on, let go. There we go. Tighten this guy down. All right, that. All right, so now that this is all in, I will tighten these, these um, bearing stacks down just a hair a bit more. I'm just gonna use the, see that's probably plenty. No, I can do a little bit more. I'm working on a new project to convert a MakerBot replicator plus into a clipper machine. Nice. Are you are you able to flash the stock board on it? Or are you doing a board swap? the left and right play is out of those bearings. Let's get these ones. Uh, no, I'm swapping it to an SKR Mini E3. Nice. You didn't work with gloves on the grinder? I No. No, I didn't. Dude, I've never, <laughs> I've never used anything like it. I, didn't, I don't know what I was thinking, man. <laughs> 
I bought gloves the day after, but yeah, my, my freaking, this thumb dude had a gnarly blister and it's just, it's just been getting worse. Luckily I'm done. Like, oh, well, I'm not, <laughs> I'm going to be moving, moving thousands of pounds of rock in the next couple of days here. But, uh, I have gloves now. I bought three sets of gloves, so I will wear them, but yeah, wasn't thinking. It, it, it felt so like the big grinder, the hardest part was cause I had a vacuum hooked up to it was keeping the vacuum out of the way and keeping the cables from not getting, um, keeping the cables from not getting twisted. But basically I was holding the unit like by the handles and I was pivoting back and forth. And so that pivoting motion was basically this just rubbing back and forth on the handle on it for six hours. And it didn't hurt in the moment. I was so focused on what I was doing, but afterwards it turned into a pretty gnarly blister that just seems to have gotten worse. Did you use eye and ear protection? Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I did not, uh, uh, ears, ear, I did, um, ear protection and then a respirator eyes. I did not. I think I was just wearing glasses. The, I bought some pretty nice workshop goggles, but they're all fogged up. I can't really see very good out of them. So I haven't been using them quite so much. Hey, Jermaine. We got 118 likes. If you have not smacked the like button, do it. Delilah sounds pissed. All right, last part of this step is just tightening down the bolt, uh, the linear rail. Just remove the fog. <laughs> I tried running them under uh, the sink with warm water and soap. I tried using, um, the heck else did I try using? I tried using like hand wipes, like wet wipes. I, I could not get rid of it. Yeah, luckily the, the thing that was more sketchy by far than the actual massive grinder was the angle grinder. I bought a, a four inch angle grinder with a diamond wheel and being that close to it on the ground, it was just crap flying everywhere. It was, it was anything, anything but enjoyable. What are they barking at? You shaving cream? This build is, uh, this build is a layer shift hell. I turned down my travel to 250 to just fix a temporary. What, what build? The underwire build? They're printing out parts for or something else? Okay, this is done. This is done and I think it looks fantastic. So let's place these here. I'll take these guys out. I forgot to take these little bumpers out one time and <laughs> went to do our first homing sequence on stream and it was like, gah, 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 gah. okay, those are done. Now we need to put the blocks on. So we've got, oh, why are we moving so quick? Okay, so we got two blocks. <laughs> one block is here. One block is here. So, uh, this is, this is left side, I think. Oh. Okay, yeah, this is going on the right side. So this is the back. Back right is like this. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, so I believe this is going like this. These are all M330 socket heads. Uh, M330. Whoa. Wait, are these? Someone told me that they hope I have more M330s and boy, do I think we're out of M330s in this kit. Yeah. Okay. I've got a single M330 and I need eight more right now. 
Um, that might be a problem. M5, M312s, M320s. Oh, where would I have M330, M3, this is all M4 hardware. <laughs> I should have the, oh, got some extra boron hardware. M335, M330s, beautiful. Found a tray. Hey Dave, uh, this is where my kit ran short on M330s. Yep. <laughs> the Ender Wire build. Uh, no. The Ender Wire build. I got mine from Cyber, finished it, but still trying. Oh, you're getting layer shifts on it. Interesting. I suggest tightening the rails, inner hole first, then outer. If there's a bend in the rail, it can move and squish it. Okay. You think I should loosen it, or for now, I'll leave it and see if I run issues? Yeah, having stock is a must. <laughs> having stock is a absolute must. Probably fine about for future projects. Okay. Yeah, Delmar, I don't think Delmar is in chat right now, but Delmar is usually the one to um, yell at me. Not yell at me, but tell me, you go in and out. I, I know better. I, 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 I do know that's typically the best practice, but <laughs> Knowing and doing are two different things. So yeah, I will. <clears throat> For anyone that didn't see that, Dutch recommended when you're tightening down the linear rail, instead of going like left to right or random, to start from the center and work your way outward. That way, if there's any bend in the rail, it can kind of flatten itself out. It's not a bad idea. Definitely not a bad idea to do. Where's the pizza at? Man. We drove by pizza yesterday, me and my dad, and I said, we haven't had pizza in a little bit, so I'm gonna get pizza the next week. Maybe maybe this weekend as a like, we're moved in officially celebratory thing. My parents have been making a bunch of food since they've been out here and it's been awesome. My, my mom made um, a co cod. Uh, she made a cod meal. She did homemade spaghetti one night. She did... Ooh, we did chicken tacos. Me and my pops made chicken tacos. Aaron did a stir fry. It's been... Food's, food's been good, man. Let's actually just go like this for now. That's pretty tight. Let's get the other one on. <clears throat> so these threads must face towards the back then on this one as well. So time for me to do dishes. <laughs> and good luck with the dishes, man. That was me last night. <clears throat> Leave those Z-axis bearing M3s a little loose. Z-axis bearings. You can re-direct the gantry when time comes. You're seeing these guys I'm installing right now? Or the bearings up top? I just ordered my new workbench. Nice! What did you go with? the cheapest hot end and it does not flow too well. Uh, the ones I'm installing right now. Gotcha. Can I adjust them later though? I feel like 
Um, let me look at this guy. Yeah, I guess you can. You can access them later. All right. Well, if that's the case, then I will leave these a little bit loose. Someone remind me later to tighten these up then. I'm going to back this one off just a hair because I went kind of tight. Go. You guys can't see it over my arm. Yeah, so I'm loosening these right now. They're good. They're gonna have some wobble. That way I can run this up to the top. There we go. Okay, so both of these you can see uh, they have some play. Next up, we are getting our counterweight idler, which is, it doesn't use a key back. It uses slightly different, same concept, but slightly different unit. I'm gonna take, no, no, no Loctite. I only do Loctite on set screws. I have really not had issues with things rattling loose with my general printing, so. I mentioned earlier, there's nothing wrong with it. Like if that's your jam and you want to Loctite everything, then you know, more power to you. It's not going to hurt anything, but because of the fact that I take things apart so much, move things around and I don't push things crazy hard, it just hasn't been the necessary. Nuts go here. So these are just press, nut press. Uh, there we go. There we go. I post pictures. Okay, sick. I'll take a look in a little bit. I wanted to get new BP racks for the garage, but I've got muscle racks right now, which are basically like MDF, no, particle board, like metal frame and particle board base, and they've been pretty good, but I like the industrial racks that have metal like going across the whole thing instead of using particle board. But for now, I've got them. They've worked well for a long time, so I'm gonna hold on to them for the time being, but I, I would like at some point to get something a little bit more heavy duty. All right, so this is saying to turn Turn this piece like this, and this is again. This is what's going to keep our our gantry from slamming into the ground or slamming into the plate when it loses power, since it's a belted belted XZ. So it's very similar to the keyback that the official Switchfire uses, but sort of a I guess like a knockoff. Uh, we need M5 25s. M5 25s are where. There we are, f fives. All metal frame, nice, that's awesome. Metal trays rattle crazy loud. You mean racks? Like I'm talking like, like, um... let me see if I can show a photo really quick. Yeah, I'm talking stuff like something like this. So the downside is I wouldn't want to put my printers directly on this, I don't think. So I'd probably have to put wood down. Um, I mean, I could go with like pavers, I suppose, for smaller printers. But yeah, what I've got right now are uh, Home Depot muscle racks. Yeah, these are basically what I'm using right now. I've used. I've got one, two, three of these that I've used in the garage for holding printers and stuff, and they work fine. Um, they're fairly rigid, but I just think that these are probably a bit stiffer because they're, one, the, the corners have sort of cross braces on them, and there's metal across the bottom versus this. You've got, is there a photo? Mm, I don't see a photo. But basically, you've got particle board that sits in these sort of channels in this, which I believe is steel. Uh, input shaping 
Wait, is there any big advantage to Core XY over Ender type with Belted Z and MG Nails? Not really. If you go, I would, I would say that if you go with a Belted Z, you're getting fairly similar benefit, which is just replacing the, replacing your Z with a belt. So I, I don't think there's a substantial gain of going with Core XZ over just Belted Z. Got to be careful and make sure the centers are braced as well. Speaking, oh, on on these on these muscle racks, I've got some pretty. I'm impressed. Like one of the racks is holding a, a 2.4, 300 millimeter, and two bamboo printers with four AMSs, or no, with two AMSs with four rolls of filament in each, and they're doing just fine. Uh, but yeah, I am a little bit concerned that the particle board is just gonna break at one point. I can't remember. They're rated. Yeah, heavy duty steel garage shelf supports up to 800 pounds per shelf. So they're rated for, oh, you can't see that. I don't know if you can still see it. I'm, I'm, I, I'm perfectly blocking it. Uh, here we go, let me move this right here. Yeah, so they're rated for a lot of weight, but I just, they don't feel quite as rigid to me. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Yeah, I work in a warehouse with industrial racks, some of, oh man, jeez. And technically you move the weight lower down. Recommendations to install the X gantry prior. That way the X gantry will stay level square to the Z axis. I can do that. Oh, don't crack. I don't know what I would use for a cross brace on this thing though. I don't know, I can, I can look into it. It's It's been fine, it's more just like, I don't know, maybe it's more of a mental thing that I'm like, yeah, it looks stronger. Okay, so you're saying you think you would install this prior to the key back. So let's go here. So this is, this has you install a key back and then install this, but we're gonna, we're gonna switch it up. Um, and so this is using M540s, which means we're gonna need we are going to need some M5 roll-ins. Let's go side view. Okay. The pallet racking comes with some cross bracing for the middle and you can buy more the pallet racking. Can you show, do you have a photo or can you shoot me a link in the Discord about what you're what you're describing? I need a like a visual I want to see what you're saying, but I don't I don't understand it via the text. The, uh them they make you buy two at a time if they don't have them in stock at the store. I returned those and got the husky unit. They wobbled too much when the Merc was going full tilt. <laughs> The muscle racks wobbled? I, I mean, I guess for me, it's probably because I have so much weight on them. Like one rack can have two, three, four, five, six, I think nine printers on it. So it's a lot of weight. I think that's what's removing the wobble. It's probably helping. It's gotta be helping. Uh, he means the shelves like cost. Oh, gotcha, okay. Okay, so we're going to spin this around, I think, like this. So I can try to align things. Ah, uh, let's see. Boy, that is not easy to see what I'm doing. Let's see. Oh <gasps> no, we're out of M540s. I don't know if I have, do I have that? M5, M540s. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
M3, M5, 30s. Hmm. Okay. Um. Or let me really quickly go. <clears throat> I'm gonna go to the garage. I'm gonna leave my mic on. I've got at least one or two more. I think I've got one more boron little like screw organizer. Maybe I have two out here actually. Let's see. Uh, here's one. Oh, my legs. M5. M5 30s. M3. M3. Nope. What about this one? No. Oh, <laughs> I found the M540 tray, guys, and it's empty. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay, let's see. I feel like I purchased M5. These are all button heads. Button heads would probably work fine. M M435. These are all M3 hardware. M3 hardware. I know I purchased a big thing of M. Let's see. Metric screws, T nuts, T nuts. A sorted M3, M4 sorted. Hmm. I don't know. It might be SOL. Do you have a spare on the Cyborg 2.4? I didn't build a Cyborg 2.4. Um, the Trident doesn't appear to have... Oops. Let's see. I can't believe I'm out. Got M five thirties. It's frustrating. It's not Cyborg's fault in this case, though. It's the. It's my fault because the upgrades took more. The upgrades took more hardware. I got M4s, 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 M5 by 10s. M5 40s? <laughs> Let's see if we've got enough. No! No, there's only one. M540. Wait, that's all we need. It's, it's all we need for this part. All right, well, it's gonna be a little bit funky because we've got one that's a different color, but it's in the back, so the only ones that'll know is us. Somewhat out of luck. <laughs> hey, Jen. Hey, Ed. You had plenty of spares? Yeah. We, we might have used them for something else. I'm looking in the Trident, the Trident parts kit, and I'm not seeing any, so yeah. It's going to be versus like sort of this silvery color. Well, one that's black, but it's okay. See if we can get these lined up. Actually, I need to see if I've got enough distance between these two. I don't. Okay, so these have to be facing, uh, these, these rolling nuts have to be facing the same direction. 
which it probably shows it it probably showed that somewhere i didn't see it but can we get it out there we go okay so these two are facing that way instead of opposite directions and this one we will remove hopefully come on guy there we go okay now that should work Okay, so those two are in. This is why I sort all my spares to my assortment. They're always in the right spot. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a bunch of um, Alex drawers coming from Ikea in mid-March for the new studio. because that's the, real... the quickest delivery they had for me was a month and a half. And once those come in, we're going Gridfinity bananas. And I'm gonna have all of the, I'm gonna have all of the stuff all my hardware labeled in those drawers. But yeah, for right now, it's a combination of like five different locations. Okay. So these are all in, but this bar can slide. So how are we supposed to align this? Is there any information on that? Lightly tighten the M540s. Uh, and align the x-axis by moving it all the way to the top. Okay. Wait, lightly tighten. How do we, how do we, how do we side to side tighten it? Do we just eyeball it? I guess I can eyeball it somewhat easily. Side to side, yeah, I was gonna say, it's not it's not that terribly difficult. Basically, all I'm gonna do, my reference point is going to be this little curve right here and how, how far it comes out onto this extrusion. So right here, it's almost exactly aligned with the inside of that channel. And on this side, it is a little bit too far to the left, so we will slide it ever so slightly. So now that's a little bit beyond it. And the right side is a little bit beyond it. And that's pretty dang good. Okay, so. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise this to the top. So let's go, you guys get like a little bit, a little different POV than normal here. So I'm gonna raise this all the way. Let's see. And now I'm gonna tighten. So I'm tightening the big, the four M540 screws that we just that we just put in. Okay, I'm not I'm not tightening. I'm crazy tight right now, just slightly tight. And then I'm gonna grab the smaller driver. And I'm gonna tighten the four M3 screws and the attachment blocks from the linear rails that we left loose a second ago. And I'm going in a cross pattern while I'm tightening these. Okay, so those are snug, not super tight. Now I'm going to grab the other Allen key again and I'm going to I'm going to torque down on the M540s so those are actually secure. Here, monkey's stomach, or maybe it's Delano's. Not food time yet. She says it's always food time. Okay, okay last little Ugga Dugga, as Steve would say.
Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. <sighs> yeah, that feels tight. Okay, so now I'm going to grab a smaller driver one more time and I'm just gonna tighten up those M3 bolts in the corners. I'll turn this around actually for this part since we're on the final little section. Ah. Time for the draw? Okay, we'll do it right after this section then. If you have not signed up for the filament giveaway, we're giving away a spool polymaker filament in just a minute here. So it's pinned in chat and you've got probably two minutes. Man, hearing, Deli hearing Delilah's stomach is making <laughs> my stomach hungry. Posting these. Okay, cool. Thank you, monkey. It will all line up when you do the belts. Really wish I had a driver right now, not Allen keys, but it's okay. This will work. And we'll go back to this side one more time. That's tight. Tight. Nice and tight. To make sure I got this snug because I mean this is these two bars or these two blocks are basically the only connecting points that secure it to the extrusion so I, I certainly don't want them to be loose feels about right to me I want some pizza tonight maybe I'll order pizza tonight I don't know what my parents if my parents don't have dinner planned I might just order pizza okay that looks good Alrighty, if you're finishing up your the form for the giveaway, do so. And I'm gonna remove the form in just a second here. Get the clear camera. Ooh. Check the motion though, make sure it goes down smoothly. Oh yeah, no, it's 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 real smooth. Yeah, I feel feel very happy about that. Alrighty, let's remove, um, remove. Hey Pascal, how's it going? Thank you. I, I really like the colors too. Someone said that a lot of people have been doing this color combo, but this is the color combo that was voted on by everybody and I think it looks awesome. They, the teal and purple complement each other really well. Okay, so we have got a total of, ooh, 130, okay. If you have not hit the like button, do so. We're at 137. I believe we can hit 150 before we do the drawing in just like two minutes here. So we had how many entries? We had 100, 123 is the number of entries. Let me go ahead and download that. That's some more copy. Extract here. Yes to all. Why didn't that work? Extract files. Okay. Place. Okay, so there should be 120, 123 entries if I got everybody. And 
I've got 123. Pascal, you were the last person to get in. <laughs> and Dutch, uh, no, not Dutch. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, Zero G, you were the first person to get in. Okay, here we go. Oh, let me see. Oh, we're at 149. We just need one more. <laughs> one more. Oh, we did it. We did it. All right, we'll do air horn. Awesome. Okay, thank you, everybody. Let's do this giveaway now. Here we go. Here's our wheel. This is the last giveaway in this house. Oh, stretch it out really quick here. We should start doing, we should start doing pre-stream stretches. There's always next week, Jorge. Is it, do you, is it pronounced Jorge or George? If it's George, say you said it wrong. And if it's Jorge, say that's right. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm saying it right, because I know I know George spelled like that, and I also know Jorge spelled like that. Alrighty, so it is the last Polymaker giveaway in this house, in this room. Um, how many times should we shuffle? Today is the seventh. Let's do that. Lucky number seven. We'll do seven shuffles today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that Zombie said... Previously, it was North America that got a gift card and the rest of the world had a big list of filament that they could choose from. I think, I think Zombie said that it's gift cards for everybody now. So I believe the winner, um, I believe that the winner, no matter where you are now, will get a gift card that you can use for a spool or towards a spool if you do want to go with like a carbon-based spool or something like that. So thank you, Polymaker, again, for allowing us to do this and supporting the channel, supporting the streams, making awesome filament and just being rad. They came out with so many new spools of filament in 2023, and I am super curious to see what 2024 looks like um, looks like for them. So, okay, let's go ahead and shuffle seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and... Good luck, everybody. Three, two, one, here we go. Andrew Watkins, you are our winner. Congratulations. There you go, Sony. Congratulations. I will, I will do my absolute best to email you today. As soon as we're done with the stream, my plan is to start like tearing things down and just loading things, whatever, whatever I can fit in a car, the U-Haul comes tomorrow, but a lot of the small stuff, even printers, I'm gonna put in the back seat. So I'm gonna do my best to email you tonight. If I haven't emailed you, this is Wednesday. If I haven't emailed you by midday tomorrow, please ping me, but I am going to do my absolute best. And I, I've been really good. There's only been a couple times, I think in the entirety of streaming where I've completely just dropped the ball. So congratulations. <laughs> All right, so let's let's get back to it. Let's get the key back on. I think I was, uh, I think that I underestimated. It seems to be the name of the game this week for me. Um, how many parts we had to do before we got to actually build the tool head. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what we can get through here. But <clears throat> we have got, I hope I'm not missing a bearing. It looks like we need two bearings for this next section and I'm only seeing one bearing left. Uh, it will be interesting. I'll have to do some digging here in a second. Okay, so let's go back to the key back section now, which is going to be attached, it looks like, on the back right side. So M510s. Take care of your neon sign. I will. <laughs> the neon sign probably won't be up for the next month or so because I don't want to install it at the new place until I until I get the I'm getting more of these these Scatus um, pegboard things, <clears throat> but they won't be here until the middle of March. So I probably it's probably gonna be a very boring studio for the next month, um, which I was saddened by. But it is what it is. I IKEA because there's no IKEAs in the state. My options for shipping were not <laughs> it was basically here's pick the soonest date, and the soonest date was I think March fifteenth, and I'm like wow that is. It is a very long ways out. <clears throat> okay, so for this, these, oops, I moved the fan. I need to print out, Steve sent me, 
Steve sent me his new skirt that has a that has a attachment point for the the fan on the back, and you still need to print it out. Portland road trip that'd be fun. It'd be so much easier if we didn't have uh, the dogs though, just because monkeys aggressive. So it's one thing if like when my parents are out here, um, and once once they move out here for at least half the year, it'll be easier to say, hey, can you guys watch the dogs? But right now, like we can't kennel him, and I I, I don't think I could road trip a man. He's not a road trip kind of guy. Okay, so it looks like these are just going to go as low as low down as possible. So let's. Oops. Yeah, it'd be fun to go to Portland. I would I would like to visit. Okay. I second the Portland trip. Are you in Portland? Deanna, I thought, I feel like you said you were in, were you in Portland? Were you, in, I, for some reason, I, I feel like you said you were in Hawaii, but that doesn't also seem completely off. I can't, I can't remember. Oh, you are, okay, you are, not Hawaii. <laughs> so you are not on a tropical beach right now, is what you're telling me. Not, not on a beach having a pina colada. <laughs> Okay, so I believe this, it looks like you just, they want you to have this bottom out basically. So to just drop the bracket down as far as it goes. Let me quickly look at the CAD here. Let's just see if it's sitting on the bottom, but I think that's how it was on the, on the switch wire. Yeah, this is just bottomed out. So, oh, well, they've got it ever so slightly off. We'll give it a tiny bit of a gap then, like just a hair, but I don't, I don't think it really matters. Uh, that was probably too much. Sadly, no, no tropics here. <laughs> Oops, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I'm south of Portland. Nice, about an hour down I-5. That's awesome. We got a bunch of guys. We got a bunch of bunch of people in Oregon. Did we already listen to all of the 8-bit music? Okay, so that feels tight enough. Now the next part is concerning to me because it looks like we need two bearings. And I'm not, in this situation, I'm not going to fault Cyborg for being short. I think that between the month and a half of building this, it's entirely possible a bearing popped out somewhere. I found it, yay. Okay, not Cyborg's fault. Okay, so we've got you, we've already done that. We've, we need to do this. So this is just simply, uh, M516. And it looks like there's not a shim on this side. So it's going screw to bearing, bearing, then shim. So we'll do that. All right, I just said M516 button head. I lived in uh, uh, Oregon beats them all. Wow, what uh, what was the primary reason for moving to so many different states? Is it work related or just what was the just, just more curious? Because like I've only lived, you know, in, in California and now Idaho, and I, I don't think I'll ever move. But I also you know went to a local community college, so I didn't go anywhere fancy for. School and, and work's always been work's always been fairly local. Where is Shim? Gotta go back to work, catch you guys later. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Los.
I, I have to, I'll have to make the drive soon for a Pi 5 and a Zero 2. Nice. The micro Center. Yeah, I miss. I do miss having a Micro Center. I, I, buy, I buy most things online, but just like even going down there just to nerd out and see all of the things on the shelf, I, I enjoy that. You know what I didn't do? I did not. I did not use a rail jig on this to make sure that the rails were centered on the extrusion. I always do that. I think I'm going to be okay this time because the the X, Y, no, the X, the joint idlers uh, basically have a profile that matches the 2020 in the rail. So I think that's going to basically act as an alignment, but I, I had I thought of it, I would have used it. I just got the Pi 5. What are your plans? What are you going to do with the Pi 5? Nice. I really want to get it for um, emulation. When we get settled in and I'm using the CNC machine more, I really want to cut out a arcade cabinet, like the full, either full size or like just the top portion that you can wall mount. So it's still got the full size. Like I don't think I need four player, but two player. Absolutely. And I think Pi 5 powered would be really cool. Uh, I grew up in MA, loved to, to work, then teenage for love. Uh, love also brought me into our, okay, gotcha. Those are all super solid reasons. And I feel like had, had, uh, had that been the case, I, I could see myself following those things to different states as well. So that makes sense. How do you like Tennessee? I've only been once. I went to Nashville for a, a trade show, uh, when I worked at Matter Hackers and it was so fun. I got to go down to bourbon. Bur nope, that's not right. Bourbon Street was New Orleans. I got to go down to basically like the party strip and go check out some of the bars and, and music venues. It was it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed um, Tennessee. Also, I think there was like, car was it Cardi Cardi's Chicken? We went to some spicy chicken place that was insane. It was so good. Okay, now I'm, <laughs> now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Dang it. I need pizza and spicy chicken. Okay, so I'm just trying to see where this is lined up. It looks like, it looks like this guy is, it's not quite centered. It looks like it's favoring the right side by a bit, but roughly left channel, a little bit to the right of center. Uh, I wasn't a fan, but I'm not into music. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, we're big. Hattie B's. It was Hattie B's. That was it, Jim. Yeah, it was. Del I really loved it. The spicy chicken was incredible. And I think they had was it apple pie for dessert. I don't know. It was some. They had some killer, um, killer dessert. I remember, too. I think we went there twice while we were there for work. Is it you going to focus? Is it off? <laughs> there we go. And get this in. Put this right here. I'll start tightening this down. Yes, banana pudding. That's what it was. It was banana pudding, not apple pie. Not even close to apple pie. The banana pudding was insane. I don't know that I'd ever even had banana pudding, and it was like I need all of the, all of the banana pudding. And then I think we had a, a sweet tea uh, with it, and it was just oh man. Yeah, we had a we had a really they put us in a um, pretty cool Airbnb when we were out there for work and it was fun. Pretty much all the work trips I took, uh, they put me pretty close to whatever convention center I was going to be at. And I would use Lyfts and Ubers, but I would also try to use if the weather was good um, and it was a bigger city like the Bird or Lime Scooter. So I was scootering around all over the place, which was, it was I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. Okay, so our bearing's on, and now we need this part, which this part is what's actually gonna hold hold the end. Um, looks like this. Uh, uh, uh. Yep, this is it. And then we need M312s. 
I just ate some banana pudding. <laughs> just, yeah. It's good stuff. I think it came with like wafers in there. Something like that food scene in Portland is the best anywhere. Yeah, that was that was definitely one of my favorite parts of um, traveling for work was the food. We, they would give us a budget for food, and um, I would okay. So just so anyone sees, this is going over here around the top like that. Be careful because this is a lot of a lot of force. Uh, yeah, they would give us a budget for for the day, and I would typically save. I would typically save all of it for like a really good dinner. I would eat cheap, like convention food or whatever, and then for nighttime, go out and eat whatever, whatever was, you know, fancy local spot. But I, I, I'm not, not that I'm not still a fan of traveling, but I got, I got pretty burnt out on it and now I like being home, especially now like with Jack and Aaron, it's like, I don't, I don't really enjoy being away for work very much anymore. The same here, but I have no budget. Nice. <laughs> it was a decent budget. I, I can't remember. Like, I want to say it was like a hundred bucks a day or something like that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So yeah, I would usually just try to try to eat little to nothing for breakfast just something pick something up and then lunch have convention food and then nighttime just find a really cool spot and, and go all out oh you don't actually have to so you can install this after the fact it looks like you, i didn't have to install it like that you can pull it through the channel and then tuck it underneath so So yeah, this will keep this will keep this from slamming down. Let's make sure this is nice and tight. I feel like I traveled a lot before my kid came out. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Like it was fun. Most of my traveling prior to that job of working at Matter Hackers and I worked there was outside of the country. Since my mom's from Sweden, it was like going to Europe and visiting family. So I'd never really been to much of the US outside of like, you know, Las, uh, Las Vegas. I live in uh, Las, or I lived in California. So we went to like Vegas and Northern California um, and, and Hawaii as a kid as, for a vacation. But like, that was really it. So through the traveling, I got to go to a lot of cool places like Nashville and New Orleans and DC and um, where else did I go? There's more. Oh, Detroit and Chicago. So yeah, I, I did enjoy it. It was a fun chapter. But now I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm good with being at home base. Okay, sweet. So that was in. So now again, when the power cuts off, since we have a belted Z, we don't have lead screws that would hold the gantry in place. So instead of it crashing down, we've got this little retraction, retracting device, kind of like clone key back, and it will, it will keep the tool head and everything nice in place. Don't put your eye out. Yeah, this I, I will. Yeah, be careful with this because if you let this go, it'll it'll do some damage to you. So there's one thing I forgot to do a couple steps ago. I think it was just attaching this guy. So this is a cable chain link, the end link. Let's see here. Looks like this is it. Okay. M36, M36. M3, where are these? There they are. Does Cyborg ship from China or do they have distributors in the US? I believe they ship exclusively from China right now. Uh, don't quote me on it. I don't know without, I, I don't know that for a fact. Oops, that's the wrong thing. Um, yeah, I don't know that for a fact, but I'm pretty sure they're, they're shipping from China exclusively. Like I don't, I don't think they warehouse in the States. I would like to think that's probably a goal of theirs, either to find distributors or resellers in the States, or, you know, at the very least to have a warehouse because the shipping is so expensive to just do piece by piece. But I don't know if they're at that scale yet. I would think that they're at the scale to have resellers, but I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> you need to do a private stream for Aaron. At... Wait, you need to do a private stream. 
and gift her a membership. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's, oh, there we go. What time do you plan to stream until today? Just trying to work out the car schedule. Um, oh crap, it's already 3.30. I was planning on stopping at four, uh, hun, so in, in 30 minutes, give or, give or take. But I can go a little bit longer. I, I know you've got, I think she has work at 4.30, so. Yeah, I can stream till four, oops, why is this, it's not the right size. That's why, I'm using the wrong driver. I could stream till 4.30 if that's when it works better. I'm pretty open-minded. <clears throat> I met Dave and Mara at the Maker Fair. Oh, nice. Yeah, Mara was my direct boss for um, the first year, I think, while I was there. And then Chris, uh, we hired on a guy named Chris who became my new boss and uh, a really good buddy of mine. He, he's an awesome dude. I haven't talked to him in a bit, but he's, he's a real solid guy, like both as a boss and as a friend, just a good dude. Yeah, the trade shows were fun. I feel like they, they helped me a lot, just sort of see a different side of 3D printing and additive manufacturing because I came from such a small, like I had such a small perspective on it, you know, just you seeing it as this sort of like fun hobby thing and then being able to see, hmm, why is this not, one second here. Okay, so Titans War. Being able to see how it was being used professionally, like some of the trade shows I went to, and we worked everything from like librarian trade shows, aerospace trade shows, manufacturing trade shows, um, EDU. It, it was it was really fun to see. Like I mean, all the trade shows were so different, right? Like the engine, the engineering ones are always sort of dry to me. And at first, I was really intimidated by them. But after a while, I discovered like, oh, like the engineers don't really have crazy questions. They just use big words that nobody in like regular conversation understands. So after a while, I just learned enough to where I'm like, yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, I, I get it. Like you, <laughs> when they came to certain things like just various tolerances and thermal properties and mechanical properties, when from before I'm like, ah, <laughs> while the librarian and EDU trade shows were so fun because the teachers and librarians were just like, geeking out and nerding out on the tech and like just had such like fun quirky personalities i really enjoyed those shows uh see you later hey thanks for hanging out jim have a great rest of your day they might have kits in the us already as i ordered by underwire on second i got it delivered today holy cow um so five days yeah five days seems really quick that seems like that'd be very expensive for them to ship the kids from China that way. So yeah, maybe they do warehouse them locally. All right. 20 years in the Navy, been there, done that. Oh, wow. Okay, you... Yep. Cyborg... Um, okay, yeah, from China. They might have some kids in the US already. I would reach out to them. They're really open about answering all questions. So um, if you're curious, just shoot them a message in their Discord. Although it might be tough to get a hold of them because of the... Is it... Is it... Chinese New Year or is it Spring Festival? I know there's a big holiday that's, I think it's already started like in the last 24 hours. I ordered directly from Cyborg 2 and I paid nothing for shipping. It said flat rate on my order too. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can try to remember to ask as well. I'm not, not entirely sure. Cool, all right, X carriage. So let's get, we'll, we'll go a little bit longer. I'm happy though we've got We've got our, all of our rails are on. All of our extrusions are on. That feels nice. We need this part. And this part. I uh, gotta run to the store, need some more ingredients. Oh yeah, I'm making ice cream. <laughs> that sounds great. All right, thanks for hanging out, Diana. Chinese, okay, it's Chinese New Year. Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year, all happening around about now, yeah. It's like, it's like two weeks too, if I'm not mistaken. I know I know it's for quite a while, like everything sort of just sh shuts down for, for a couple weeks. Okay, so we need 
Uh, what do we need? M210 self-tapping screws, which are right here. It says we need a micro switch. And I think we're reusing, right? Are we reusing the micro switch for this one too? Or is this included? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure we're using the existing one, which, wait, 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 what's this? No, I don't think we're using the existing one. Yeah, this looks like it's what we're using. Because we've already got Y, so here's the um, X, and then Z's gonna be the Omron. So you, you only reuse one, you only reuse one of the limit switches. Yeah, it comes with it. Making Mexican hot shot. Oh my God, that sounds so, that sounds so good. Is it your own recipe or are you following something online? I, I might need I might need a link if uh, if it's an online recipe. <laughs> we celebrate my house since we are Chinese and Tony. Oh, that's awesome! Chinese New Year's this week. Cool. Lunar New Year. Um... Employees. Yeah, I imagine Bamboo Bamboo Lab is working around the clock trying to get it done before. Good luck with the rest of your move. Thank you. I will take all of the all of the best wishes. <laughs> I will take every single one right now. Okay, so. This does not, like, where are, here we go. So the switch is going in, let's zoom in a little bit, I suppose. There we go, switch is going right there, but it's gonna be facing this way, and it's going to be like this. So arm is facing from in to out downward like that. Grab some of these tiny little, <clears throat> I made the mistake of ordering a large format camera from a Chinese manufacturer in the new year once. I try to watch the calendar better now. Yeah, <laughs> and anything, I just know for a fact that like anything that I need will be here in a few weeks time. Like it's a, just a pause. I was talking to my dad about it because I don't think he knew about it. And honestly, like I, I had no idea until, you know, doing so much uh, work with YouTube and 3D printing and so many different companies based overseas. But it's a pretty cool thing to have have that time off and if i'm not mistaken i think almost everybody goes home to family and hangs out with friends like i wish i wish we had something like that you know it's a pretty cool it's a neat thing <clears throat> especially for the extent of time like i said I, i'm pretty sure it's nearly two weeks mexican hot chocolate ice cream my mind goes to <laughs> The one driver I didn't pack down. Okay, let's not over tighten these. It's so easy to crush micro switches if you tighten just a little too tight. So I just kind of finger tighten. We are golden. Oops. Oh. Good with that. And now it wants us to take an M316 socket head. M316. M316s are missing. Can this be could this be what we're looking for? M316, that is the one. Winner winner. Okay. And so for this. Wait, is this the same is this even the same part? This doesn't look. I don't think this is the same part. Okay, so in the other piece, we're going through here. That is tight. Did I? Ooh. Yeah, that is really tight. I thought it was maybe just a print tolerance thing, but. I recognize that bolt size. <laughs> All right, does it matter which way this goes? I think it goes like, th I don't know that it really matters. And so this little, this little like belt retaining clip, it's not, the hole's not centered perfectly on it. It favors one side a little more than the other, but looking at the other side, it's not entirely obvious to me which direction it goes. So we'll just try 
I assume it's going to work fine either way, but let me try that. Each time, each time you bend down, you make that old man sound and you're like early thirties. <laughs> yeah. 30, 31, I think. Yeah. 31. Dude, if you saw what I've done, the last, well, one, I've got, I've got a bed back, uh, from some car crashes and that I was in when I was, um, much younger, but the last, the last, uh, week here has been seven days of like insane, insane, like movement between masking the garage, painting the garage, grinding concrete, pouring epoxy, back rolling. Like, I mean, I, I just, I don't think I've moved this much in like, I, I couldn't tell you like the amount of work, 50% chance you get it right. That's right. So yeah, I'm hurting a lot more than normal. I had, I bought some knee pads, but still like just being on my ass and the times I wasn't wearing it on my knees on the concrete floor in the garage, it is just not forgiving. I'm 10 years older. <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes I, some, some days I feel uh, quite a bit more than 31. Anytime Aaron, like Aaron or me gets up and and like something pops, I'm like, yeah, welcome to, <laughs> this is 30. <laughs> this is, you know, we've, we've, we're on, <laughs> yeah, so anyways. Okay, so both sides need the same little retaining guy. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just, if I go this way, I, I, I don't think it really matters. It seems kind of weird that it's offset. It's a, it's a very slight offset at that too. I'm like 20 years older. Epoxy is for... Oh, are, are you, are you doing it yourself? Or are you paying someone? I, like I did so much research and a lot of people say you can just acid etch. So like, I'm going to, I'm going to just do a five minute talk of epoxy. So to get it to bond correctly with the concrete, there's a few things that need to happen. One concrete needs to be clean. Concrete cannot have any top coating on it and concrete needs to ha uh, be porous. And concrete is porous, but the top layer that's usually smooth, uh, which is not great for a mechanical bond with the epoxy. And so your two options really are an acid etch, which is basically a acid that you combine with water and sprinkle onto the concrete that eats away at it, and then you hose it all out. Um, or you do what I did, which is take a massively heavy disc with diamond teeth on it. And it, it quite literally just grinds the concrete into, into fine dust. And I did a ton of research. I mean, months and months of like YouTube videos, Reddit posts, forum posts back to like 2008 to like try to try to get every data point I could and see like, where are the majority of people overlapping in what they're saying? Where are some of the discrepancies, yada, yada. And the key thing I took away was, that diamond grinding was the absolute best method that can be done. It could, it might be overkill. And in some cases, an acid etch done properly is more than sufficient, but considering the amount of cost and time that was going to go into it all, I just said, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the grind. But, um, uh, the, one of the builders, the project manager for the, the community that we, we are moving into, that we moved into told me that he's done three garages all new garages and the acid etching has been totally fine, but I just didn't, I just didn't do it. And then the temperature is a factor. So you need it to be at least 50 Celsius. Um, moisture is a factor. Moisture is detrimental to being able to apply epoxy. So we had to pump, we had two space heaters in the garage pumping heat in it for the last five days. We had, um, because the, I needed to epoxy up to right underneath where the doors close and I had to have the doors open garage doors. What we ended up doing was raising the garage doors about a couple inches enough to get an arm underneath with a brush to cut in. And then I duct taped from the bottom gasket of the garage doors to the concrete. So that way wind and rain couldn't get in. And then we took some massive pieces of lumber from the scrap pile of the neighbor's house that's being built and used that as a shield. I mean, it was, it was nuts. Like it was absolutely, it was nuts. Are you, are you doing, are you doing concrete? Or are you doing the acid etching? Uh, nice. But yeah, the amount of like the amount of stuff that went into it was, it was, it was crazy. No problem here. I have concrete not cured in raw volume. 
is also heated. Concrete not cured. I, I think I asked you about this because it said everything I read said you had to have the concrete for a certain amount of time. Um, for a certain amount of time for it to. You had to have the concrete for a certain amount of time for it to step bond correctly. Um, I can show a quick photo. I posted one photo in the uh, Patreon channel, but I will share it. I'll get more photos as, let me see if I go, oh, here we go. Okay. So this is before I removed the, um, this is before I removed all of the blue tape. Um, so it looks even a little fancier now. How do I zoom out of this? Here we go. Okay, so let me wrap one second here. Okay, so this is this is basically the view. Okay, okay, it's 28 days. That's what, okay, so it's not that long then. So this is the view from the house looking out towards the garage when it was uh, before. So we had we had masked. I mean, we masked every single bracket. I was standing. I was standing on my tippy toes, masking all this, masking the wire, masking the lights, like everything. So. The garage was fully, we paid to have it fully insulated and drywalled, but they don't finish, they don't finish it. So um, the two car is gonna be the studio, not not like the primary, but basically lasers and CNC. And then this is where Aaron will use the garage as an actual garage. So this was before, and this is after. So this is how it looks now. Um, I only had two of these lights from this house that I took over there. So I have a third one coming in, so ignore the yellow light. But yeah, the walls are completely done. Um, and the flooring is, is epoxied. So it looks awesome. Like I, I am so freaking proud of the way it looks. It's beautiful. I like, I tell it my mom walked in there and like Erin too. And like Erin, she appreciates the things I do, but like a lot of times I show her things that I'm super excited about. She's like, oh, that's pretty cool. But no, like she was so pumped on the floor. She's like, it looks like a galaxy. So yeah, from before and after, and again, imagine what with the white light, no wires hanging and like having, you know, CNC machine here and printer racks over here, but from before to after, it's a, it's a pretty massive, uh, pretty massive overhaul. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, again, seven days of my life, you know, seven long days of my life. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad that it's like a one and done thing. I, if you like, I, I commend anyone doing this professionally but it, someone mentioned earlier, I'm assuming, you know, if you have the right tools for the job, it makes it a hell of a lot easier, which, you know, I, I did my best to acquire the tools as quickly as possible and rent what I didn't have, but it's not the same as having the best tools for the job. So <laughs> thank you very much. I'm, yeah, very much so like, um, uh, I, a lot of firsts for me, you know, I, I'd never worked with epoxy or concrete or I had never really painted. We always lived in apartments. So it was just like, just funneling YouTube and and stuff online as much as I possibly could but from before to after it's just like my dad was like we need to get a pool table like it looks like you know it looks like a hangout place so but yeah that's been my life for the last bit here <laughs> so thank you I, I really really appreciate the kind words because it it certainly it physically and mentally has been has been very involved um okay <laughs> let's let's get a little bit further here let's see so we need M312s, M340s, <clears throat> 340s, M340s. Where are M340s? Here we are. M340s, we need one, two, three. And then we need two M312s, which are... Why don't I see them? Oh, there they are, uh, M312s. Of these, <clears throat> it's worth it's worth the pain. <laughs> Finally made a live stream. Good morning from Australia. How's it going, Brent? Oh, monkey, the uh, the flakes. My dad was giggling. Like, so we're in the garage, right? And and um, I think I mentioned this earlier, but if, sorry if I'm repeating myself. I don't remember who I've told what to. But so it was me and my dad in the garage, and we've got full you know respirators on with the cartridge filters and. We're you know uh, gloved up and 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 so we're trying to communicate with each other in this because this was the epoxy I got was from a company in Florida so it's 100% epoxy which is super strong stuff but it smells like death so like you have to you have to be properly um, uh, filtering you know your your breathing 
And so me and my dad are in there and anytime he was trying to tell me something or I'm trying to tell him something, it was a lot of like, like aggressive, duh, 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 like hand motions and, and yelling. But because the garage was empty, you have the echo factor. And because of the muffling, I mean, it just, it sounded like two cave people yelling back and forth at each other. Like it, it was, it was ridiculous. And when I, when it came to the flaking, I was wearing these spike shoes that I bought that like they're crazy. It's basically like spiky bolts and nuts and you're uh, walking on them. And it allows you to walk on the, the epoxy without leaving shoe imprints. And so I'm there with like a five gallon bucket, just sprinkling, you know, sprinkling flakes up, trying to hit all the spots as much as I can. And there are some areas that are a little bit less than others, but I think that given the fact that I don't do this professionally, I'm quite happy with the end result. But my dad, <laughs> my dad was like, almost making fun of me saying like, like, woohoo, like it looks like you're, you're, you know, throwing confetti for a party or something like that. It was, I mean, it was, it was funny. Like it, it was, I, I almost wanted to record some of it, but I think that had I done that, it would have been even more stressful. And, and it, um, I probably had a, would have had a much greater chance of messing something up just because I didn't really know. I, I needed all my brain power, but it, it was, it, it was funny, man. Yeah, it was like, it was like that, like, rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> so many times my dad was saying stuff to me and I'm just like, ah, but I, I, in my head, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know what you're saying. It was the same thing with him too. He's like, I don't, I, he's like, I tried, but I don't know what you were saying. Okay, so we need some M3 nut. One side has a bunch of nut pockets. So let's see, M3 nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was silly, man. It was real silly. Oops. Somehow we, somehow we made it work between our yelling and our giggling. Uh, TF2 Pyro. <laughs> is that, is that how, is that how he talks? I never really played, um, I didn't PC game when, Team Fortress 2 was real big, but I did download it. I remember playing it a little bit with one of my buddies, um, but I don't remember a ton of the details. If I remember it, play, it plays similar to like, um, Team Fortress plays similar to almost like, um, oh gosh, what's the game? Not oh, Valorant. It's a Blizzard game. And I think um, basically where you're like, you have a payload, you're trying to escort, if I remember correctly. Almost midnight here, time for me to go. Have a great night. Hey, have a wonderful night, Nice. Thank you for stopping by <laughs> and hanging out for the entire stream, man. Hope you have a great night. Okay, so these attach like this. Overwatch, yeah, that's okay, that's that's the game. It's, isn't it it's similar, right, as far as the game mode goes? I mean, I know, I think that uh, Overwatch has tons of different characters. I, I played Overwatch when it first came out. I bought it at launch back when I was actually playing some games. And I remember, I think I played the Viking guy. There's like a, there's a little Viking dude. Your parents took Jack for a long, uh, your parents took Jack for a long walk. I'm about to head over to the rental to get ready for it. Okay, sweet. Wait, don't you start work? What time is it? Don't you start work in like 35 minutes? Tor Tor Torbjorn? Is that is that the character name? It's been a really long time. Valorant, I mean, man, original Valorant came out when my buddy was renting his house, or renting an apartment in Anaheim. I remember I remember going over to his house with my laptop and downloading it and us playing it. And, and that had to have been, I, I met him when I was 20, so 11 years ago. So I would imagine that, but the Overwatch came out, what, eight, eight years ago then maybe? Uh, Viking! <laughs> <laughs> if you say Viking, <laughs> Maker Viking will appear. Oh. oh. I think it's probably Aaron. Twenty sixteen, okay. And we're in twenty twenty. Yeah, eight years ago. Oh, I did it pretty right. 
Yo, you can hear the dogs. I figured the, sometimes the soundproof or the sound filter blocks them out, but. What are you guys barking at? Huh? Oh, it's food o'clock. Is it, what is it for here? Let me see, what time is it? It's 3.54, so it's six minutes till they're supposed to be fed. So they're, <laughs> they're probably letting me know. I just got home, Mexican hot chocolate ice cream is mostly my recipe. Okay. Well, if you ever, if you ever decide to create a blog or post it somewhere, I will absolutely take a, take a copy of it. I think I'm pretty sure when I was younger, I was in Cub Scouts. I never made it to like adult Scouts, which I think is Boy Scouts. But I remember one time in Cub Scouts, us making, I think it was just vanilla ice cream. I don't remember the process much other than it. We put it in a can and like we're rolling the can until the cream churned. And I, I do remember enough to remember it was delicious, but that's really the extent of what I remember. Okay, this is, is this threading into... Huh, did I screw up or is this this thread into plastic? I think it just threads into plastic if I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure these are just sort of like placeholder bolts. I'll work up a written recipe and share it to Discord. That'd be awesome. If it's not too much work, I, that would be awesome. But don't, if you're busy, don't. But yeah, if you've got a minute and you don't mind, that'd be sick. We have a food, I think we have a food channel. Um. If you don't mind posting it there, that would be cool. Because that way, that way, if anyone else wants to see it as well, but I would, I would enjoy making it even just once, just to try it out. Okay, leave three to four millimeters exposed. Yeah, I think these are just the alignment screws, if I'm not mistaken, that you'll use when you attach the back of the, like stealth burner hot end. So we'll leave it on here. All this chat about food is making me hungry, and I went out for a mixed grill like three hours ago. <laughs> we can't not talk about food in this stream. It's like. Uh, someone said, I think it was, maybe it was Monkey Butler, I don't remember, but someone said, I'm, I'm only here for the food talk. Uh, we have a food channel and I, I'd like it to, yeah, yeah, if you, if you don't mind, Deanna, then um, posting it, again, no rush, but whenever you, whenever you have something written up, post it there so that way you know, other people can potentially make it too. Awesome, so blocks together, uh, we've got our little belt attachment points, end stops on, and then we've got our little alignment bolts here. I think next we're attaching the probe, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, on, on run probe time, so let's grab that. Again, we're starting with the probe and we'll see how it goes. If it ends up working great, we'll probably keep it. If it ends up being problematic, um, we'll, we'll end up either going clicky or we'll go with the Eddie from Big Tree Tech whenever, whenever it ends up getting released. If I haven't heard anything in a couple of weeks when they're back from holiday, I'll probably reach out and just ask if they have any if they have any update, I need some stretches after this. It sounds like me, I can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it was you. I could be wrong. <clears throat> okay, so for the probe. The position can be tuned later. Set the initial position for about six millimeters below. Okay, so probe. I don't remember. Okay, so yeah, we want the light facing outwards. So I haven't used one of these in a bit. So light goes in like this. And the wire goes up and to the right. There's a channel like that. And then we need M325 socket heads. M325, where are you? M5. M320, am I blind? I don't see them. M316, M320, M325, there they are, right in front of my face. Monba Army, food channel disguised as a 3D printing channel, exactly. Hey Nuno, hey Tor, hi. Is that a package? Is it for me? Oh, it's for me? Exciting, ooh, I think I know what it is. Put it down there, please. Uh, so are you planning to stream longer and I'm gonna drive my golf to work? You guys want to be without a car? Can your parents project for a walk? So you want me to drop you off at work? If, you're, if you guys need or want the car. Yeah, I want to move some stuff over the next few hours. Okay, so what time do I need to be done streaming? I'm like 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Okay. I'm gonna, we'll do a, this is a, 
This is a 10 minute air horn warning for everybody. All right, Erin's getting ready for work and then I'm gonna drop her off. So I gotta end the stream in 10 minutes and then I'm gonna start moving stuff. So this isn't goodbye. This is farewell for now. <laughs> yeah, I should probably start moving some stuff. Okay, so bolt, I'm just basically passing these two bolts through here. And then there's gonna be a catch on the other side. Uh, let me pull these wires out of the way. Hopefully I don't damage them. So the catch is just a tiny little, tiny little guy. Um, here we are. I'm pretty sure it's this dude. So it's just a tiny little, tiny little printed part with some threaded inserts. <clears throat> So we will loosely tighten this for now so I can adjust the positioning a bit. And then we are going to go, it says approximately six millimeters. So um, where are my rulers? Ah, normally I just turn around on the pegboard and I've got the stuff right here. Okay, here we go, here we go. I'm just gonna I, like use a ruler and kind of eyeball it for now. It says you can adjust it later, so it's not too important to get it exact, but we'll go, oops, that was too far. That right there looks like it. millimeters. I also would like to get it kind of flat, not at an angle. I think that would throw it off because there's a little bit of left to right play with this. Um, that's That looks okay for now, I think. <laughs> I'll, t I'll tell her uh, when I see her, Luke, when she comes back. What are you working on right now, build-wise? Aren't you, I feel like you were doing a, like, is it a community build or you're building a printer for someone else? I, I, at least, I, I mean, I haven't been on social media or Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it nowadays in, in a little bit here, but I feel like you posted something saying that you were doing a build, but I think the build was for someone else. I, I can't remember. And I want to say it was either a Trident or a 2.4. Okay, beautiful. Probe is in place, wires like that. <clears throat> Channel, great. Now we're going to attach this to our rail. Uh, yep, M3.8, big guy goes down. M3.8. M2, 3, and 4. Turn this around. All things considered, I, I we definitely didn't get through the stealth burner today, <laughs> but I, uh, I I feel like we still made pretty good progress considering it had been two weeks since last stream and there was a lot to catch up on. Oops. Oh, there I go again, groaning. Uh, I finished the Boron 2.4 build. Okay, maybe that's what it was. Then a Micron Plus, now working on a Trident 350. Sick, okay. I'm curious as to your feedback on the ERC FB2, because it's on our list. Um, we're probably building a Milo fairly soon here. Um, and I've got another one or two pretty cool builds lined up. So I don't know, um, ERCF's going to be in somewhere in there. But I want, this is the printer I, I think I plan on using with the ERCF. So we'll, we'll probably use it stock for a little bit here and then we'll convert the stealth burner to be the modded version that has a blade to cut the filament. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get a, uh, Mark, I'm gonna get a an emoji for members. It's like old man. It'll just be like a picture of an old man. I also need to get, I need to get new member uh, badges. <laughs> I've been saying it forever. I just, I'm like a little bit torn about what they should look like, but I should probably just, just maybe use the current emblem of the robot and just slightly tweak colors or something. I don't know. ERCF V2 sounds cool. Yeah. I ordered all the parts for it. So I, I purchased the V1 like two years ago. We started building it. I wasn't happy with the tolerances. 
of the, um, I wasn't happy with the tolerances of the parts I'd printed out. So I started reprinting, but then I heard that they were working on a V2 where there was a community version. And so now that it's out, I did order the parts I need to convert my V1 into a V2. So we've got everything, I, I believe, or most things. Maybe we don't have the buffer. We don't have all the parts of the buffer system, but we've got most of it. Okay, M312s go on like, wait, how does this go? Yep, like this. Music stopped. Oh, we've got exactly four M312s left. It's the exact number we need. Printing ERC FP2, that's it. Nice. Yeah, I really, I really am curious to hear how it goes. I'm hoping it's, it's rad. I, it looks fantastic. I know the team, all of the community members that worked on various parts of it have put a ton of, oops, have put a ton of work into it. So I'm quite optimistic. That's not right. This will probably be the last thing I do is just mount this on right now. So next week we'll start off with my, one of my least favorite things, which is running. Yeah, next week we'll start off with like my least favorite thing, which is running the belts. Then we'll jump right into Stealth Burner. Um, I gotta take off F1. Hey, thanks for hanging out, Hobo. Excited to see Milo, been wanting a small CNC concern about the noise, tiny apartment. Yeah, I am very curious to see how it goes. Um, I mean, it, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see how it goes. I like the idea of a small mill. I've got a fairly large CNC for light burn stuff, and then I've got a small CNC um, that I just need, that I've got years and years and years ago, and couldn't use it much because of being in an apartment as well. Honestly, the, the machine itself wasn't that loud. Um, Deanna, it was mostly the vacuum that I had to run for the dust collection that was louder than the actual cutting. So. Um, I know that you can get, there's some pretty creative people out there that have made awesome, like insulated enclosures that really help to mask the, the sound of both the vacuum. Like, I think you can sort of have the vacuum down below and a cabinet type setup. So it's going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how it all goes. I want a Milo, but I'm also waiting on a black, oh, the black, yeah, I really want to build a black box. Black box is probably on my list too, Luke. I know I saw you in the I saw you in the Discord for it, and I'm like, I'm waiting. I think I don't think the I saw the product page for the community edition, but I don't think the kits were there yet, so I don't know how much the cost is. Uh, you must drop the unstuck wires up the same way as the probe. What? Really? Did they screw up. Uh, I forgot that I'm building mine, so I screwed ERCF is the fourth or fifth in my line of projects. That's that's kind of where I'm at, too, with it. So I might have to take that off, then you're saying it looks like. How does it go? How can it? Go? How can it go up the same channel? Hold on, let me look at... Uh, let me look at it right here, and I can't actually tell. Huh. Gotcha. So I must just need to use, so I probably need to, I'll show this really quick. I'm going to do it off stream because I just, I got to get going to take Aaron to work. But it looks like there is a channel. Uh, boom. So it looks like right here, um, we've got these like slots, but it looks like on this side, there's a little bit more room. So I think if I remove this Omron probe, I can feed the two pin JST connection through that hole and then up through here. So that's likely what I'm gonna do. Uh, does Cyborg give you a shipping notice or does it just arrive? You should get a shipping notice. I, I, I would say you should definitely get a shipping notice. Have a great night, Jen. Um, I was hoping I was hoping to have the kit this week, but I don't have ship notification yet. For the black box, Luke, did you already pay it? Because I, I looked on the website and didn't see the ability to order. I mean, I, I have to wait a bit anyway, regardless. Okay, cool. So that's all I'll do then. Thanks for stream. Go get her to work and safe moving. Okay, yeah, we'll end it here. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Sorry again that I look tired and things are kind of chaotic. It's going to be a little bit wild for... 
it's gonna be a little bit wild for a bit here and the next week's stream will be at the new place but it's just gonna be me this bench and probably nothing on the background until the stuff from ikea comes in in march but we'll build we'll we'll talk about food and we'll we'll figure things out as we go so all right everybody thanks for hanging out have a wonderful rest of your week and i will uh, hopefully see you guys next wednesday i will I have no idea what time the stream will be next Wednesday. I've got to look at Aaron's schedule, but as soon as I know over the weekend, I'll try to get it scheduled out so that way anyone that wants to be there can come and hang out, okay? All right, bye everyone, take care.